Okay, greetings everybody. Welcome back. Vormithrax here. Let's play some more Kingdom Dungeon and Hero. We will hit, uh, probably continue would work, but we'll make sure. I've got a few saves in here now. Let's go uh, V1 start. <clears throat> Where were we? I think we were, uh, we were in the middle of a war and about to go into a dungeon. All sorts of fun stuff. All right, turn summary. What, uh, what was happening? Uh... Oh, winter effects. Oh, we're in fall. All right. I uh, didn't realize that was creeping up on us. So 62 food was produced. Some location produced less. 35. We're still at, uh, what is that, 48. Um, so we're okay there. We've still got 75. We're still maxed out. I need to sell a little still, even though we're heading into winter. Um, I think between our food production we seem to be getting, plus the money we've got, we'll probably be fine with this nation. Um, what else? Progress, nothing new there. Collaboration report. Oh yeah, uh, I gotta figure out what these messages meant. <laughs> so we recently liberated um, that city in Everfield. And lots of trade missions, lots of trade missions. Okay, hey there, Azrael. First time you've seen the game, what's it about? Uh, you know, I thought you watched all of the Vormithrax stuff. <laughs> this is episode two. You missed one, apparently. Uh, I think, to be fair, I did uh, I did play this first episode at a pretty odd hour. I think it was like one of my one of my insomnia streams at 1 a.m. my time. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, this is Kingdom Dungeon and Hero. We're going to play with our kingdom. We're going to uh, go explore dungeons uh, with our heroes. So, you know, the, the, it's in the name. The name's pretty pretty straightforward about what we're going to be doing. Uh, this is our world map. Uh, it's a king, kingdom fantasy kingdom simulator with some light RPG elements in that we're going to recruit heroes to make them governors of our cities, leaders of our armies, and form in, into adventure parties to go on uh, some old blobber-style dungeon adventuring for uh, glory, cash, uh, magical crystals and uh, magic items and artifacts to make our heroes stronger. Uh, all the while, all these other kingdoms are trying to do the same thing. So there's a whole bunch of kingdoms on this map, but that's the full world map. Uh, so yeah, we're we're this country right here in the middle. We're literally right in the middle of the map. So this is us. We are currently trying to help Cardiar. They are uh, unfortunately undergoing an invasion by Eminon. And um, they've been split up into a few areas now, so... Ah. Who does it say? So it says we control this now. Isn't that... Hmm. Hmm. Hey there, Alvaro. Uh, so Kraken Studios is the uh, developer of the game. If you have any questions about the game, how it plays, mechanics, and so on, um, obviously he is the expert. <laughs> so I am the stumbling fool trying to learn things. Uh, he'll he'll be here to help us along. Okay. Uh, so uh, I have an immediate question. I didn't realize this before, but uh, I was just in Everfield at the end of the, the last turn before I moved my army out. So even though I'm allied with these guys, I now have ownership of this section. That feels weird. Huh. That feels weird. I'm here trying to help him. I don't want to be taking his territory, but that seems to be what it's doing. Um, so uh, we've got our primary army right here. We're about to try to uh, liberate Mary Hill. Uh, I'm not sure how I go about giving territory back to the original owner, though. I mean, I wasn't expecting to come over here and take ownership of all of his stuff. Um, so he still has, uh, actually, let me show ownership. Uh, where is, which one was that? Hex control. All right. So this and this is still his. We're going to try to grab this back and then we're going to come south and try to push him back south into his own territory. Um, but yeah, so, uh, that, that seems weird. Should have gone back to him. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. It's only been one turn. So maybe when I update this next turn, it'll, 
it'll flip back. I I'm not sure on the timing of when that's supposed to occur. Uh, right now, we need to... Uh, I have to... I'm out of movement points. I didn't want to do this fight until we reset our movement points. So, um, yeah, we'll be ending the turn here in a moment. I think that's about where I was. Uh, no, the rest of the guys are ready to go. So I must have done that fight right at the start and then saved it. Because I've got uh, my, my, my hero units are ready to go into the dungeon. All right, let's turn uh, hex control back off again. Let's check. Uh, let's check supply though. All right, yeah, we're okay there. So we'll return to this here in a second. Um, so, are these arrows showing their previous action? Is that the only thing it shows? It's not showing intentions. It's showing what where they went from a previous space is what I'm assuming. So this unit came from Mary Hill straight south. I think that's his cavalry unit that he had up there. And then he, I had a wounded unit over here that I didn't finish off, and he's retreating back here as well. Okay, so it is previous. Cool. That's very helpful. That lets us know, since we're not watching every single unit shuffling around the map in the uh, turn sequencing, other than the combat portions, that helps get a feel for the flow of things. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I don't want to attack with that unit yet. We're going to wait for the turn sequence. Uh, leaving the other guys, you are... Is it, uh, is it five rumors total anywhere? Or five rumors within a, an area? Or how, how does the five rumors limit thing work? So if we try to gather rumors, no positive results. So we've got a lot of dungeons out, but they're all tougher than we can manage. I can only do low dungeons currently. We just found one way down here that we're about to jump into. Those guys are all out of movement as well. Yeah, I think I was right at the end of my turn. He's doing nothing, nothing. All right, let's, uh, let's get Varen moving. Let's go this way. I've already got the full crew ready to go into that dungeon, so we'll just find another location to start gathering rumors in. Next up, leaving everything else, I think. I don't see anybody else with points that I want to do anything with. All right, let's go ahead and move the turn along, and we'll see what happens over here. I'm kind of interested. At the moment, we've got him uh, retreating. If we can just get this guy out of here... Then we'll be able to come south and uh, see what we can do. We've got Aminon asking us for uh, peace already and has been for a turn or two. But I don't know how to push him along the path of declaring peace with Cardier. And I'm worried Cardier will declare peace before I can free up the territories. <laughs> so we will uh, we'll find out. All right, let's, uh, let's do another check. So uh, resource-wise, we are super low on gold, but that's because I did finally... Uh, where is that unit? Not the hero. Uh, how does that work? Ah, yeah, there's our light cav. So... We spent, we bought our light cab finally. It took forever. We bankrupted ourselves <laughs> in getting horses and gold and iron and so on. So we're going to be hurting for some resources for a while. Um, so hopefully we can get that light cab into action effectively. It's going to be after this fight though. It's just, it's just not going to be in, in, in time. All right, let's process the turn. I think, I think we've done everything else. So off we go. Let's see what happens. Okay, turn summary. Uh, oh, I think I forgot to sell food again. Dang it. <clears throat> yeah, we rotted some food. I got I to gotta remember to stop letting that happen. Uh, I was pretty good at it in the first uh, half dozen turns, but then I've lost. I uh, forgot the last few. Uh, Alchemist report, nothing new. Governor report, trade offer from Iquir. Uh A storm has battered and damaged Marabilis. Hey, now. That's not cool. 
peasants. The scent is at rabble and nothing else on the indicator. All right, let's go look at what's going on over here. So, nope, it's still showing my flag. And showing my hex control. I don't have any units in there anymore. So, I don't know what's going on there. Um, What the heck? He, what did he put, try to attack it and then he retreated out to here? <laughs> How could he have started here and gone to there? Huh. Um. All right. Well, let's let's do this fight first. This is the thing I'm most concerned about. So, in we go. Get out of there. My location. All right. So we are taking some losses, but we've got him out. That's the last unit I need to chase out of the north here. Um, I do, this is still Cartier, so once this ownership changes, Aminon will own nothing of Cartier. I think, I want to say Jiri, ooh, did Jiri start Aminon? I don't remember if Jiri started Aminon or Cartier. But we'll make that our focus. If we can just get him out and then go take this, maybe we can push them into a, into a conclusion to the war. All right, hex control off. Uh, that's all we're doing with the army for now. We'll sit here. Uh, we're not moving anybody over. Let's go. Let's move you all the way up to Far Walk. A couple more rumors. Then uh, we'll get you to go to the rumors. False rumor. All right, we do have a location. It is a low. Thank goodness we got another low. All right, so once we finish this one, we'll pull back north. I've got one more person down here. I'm going to search for more rumors. Maybe we can get another low. Let's see. Who was I sending into this group? I forget who was joining. Somebody in here. Let's see. Got the druid and the warrior. Definitely don't need a third warrior. I need you in the group, so get in there. And then Vimal, you're, you're level two. Who's, uh, oh, Omisha, that's who's coming out. All right. Do this the right way. <laughs> Omisha out. You guys in. Now we're set. We got our two, two, and two. They're all level two, so that's my dungeon group. All right, you. Show me another rumor. Another location, but we're out of movement points. All right. For folks that missed the uh, the previous stream in Kingdom Dungeon Hero, uh, these are some of my heroes out here. The circle ones are heroes. The square ones are military units. So that's a militia unit guarding Watch Bay. Most of what you see out here is militia units. I've got one hero up here and one hero here as well. These guys are going to talk to the uh, the locals in the bars and taverns and so on. They're getting rumors of local activity of monsters and, and strange goings on and attacks and so on. And then they're going out and investigating those. And some of them are going to have uh, kind of like dungeon locations that we can go explore. The little indicator, the letter is the difficulty. So that's a low difficulty, medium difficulty, high difficulty, and extreme difficulty. We won't be going into the extremes for, for a fair bit. Um, we need to do some lows for a while to level up our party. And then I've got a group of six heroes here that are actually going to go into the dungeons. They're my primary exploring group at the moment. We got uh, Jonan. This is a wizard, an adept, a druid, a druid, and a warrior, and a warrior. Um, so here's a question, uh, Alvaro. Uh, how the heck do I get adventurers? <laughs> I have not seen one single adventurer in either my test game or this game so far. Zero. <laughs> Is there ever a chance for Marabilis or for uh, brighter, kind, brighter Kind to get adventurer heroes? And if a country doesn't normally produce them, how do you go about getting one? Is there any other way to do it? It's by randomness. Uh, if you say so, I mean, we're 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 a ways in. We're on turn nine of this one, and we're on turn. I think I went to nine or ten turns in my test game, and I'm still 
100% never seen an adventurer. Let's go check now. Now watch this. The, I, I'm Brent, I bring it up, and then we're going to go look, and there's going to be an adventurer. No warrior, warrior, cleric. So lots of warriors. It's usually warrior, warrior, and then if I'm lucky, one other thing. But it's just overwhelmingly warriors so far. Um, so yeah, no adventurers so far. We're, we've got one space open. I'm leaving one space open for a possible adventurer to event eventually show up. <laughs> we'll keep an eye on it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so yeah, so we're, we're controlling brighter kind, big open world of nations, any one of which I could have chosen to play. I haven't seen much activity out of these guys yet. These guys have not gone to war that I'm aware of. Uh, yeah. Lumacy, and then those guys, they're, they're still not at war with anybody. So I don't know how long it takes the servants to kick off. We're only at turn nine out of 180. So long way to go. But, uh, yeah, no activity out of them yet. There's been lots of fighting over here. Uh, ooh, actually, they, they took them over. There used to be another country here. Uh, so, yeah, they got, uh, they, they got absorbed. All right. Open diplomacy again. So, yeah, that's Black Crown. Um, they're at war with Fewer and Forum. I don't know if there's a way, I don't think there's a way of seeing like a history thing, but, uh, uh, am I memorying wrong? Maybe they, maybe they were there, but I thought there was another country and they took them over. Uh, I could be misremembering, but yeah, we, we can play any of the countries, uh, which is very cool. Lots of different starting positions to, uh, to go deal with. I'm really impressed that, uh, the little guys like Silverwood have held on. I, I have an appreciation now for fortifications because <laughs> these guys were getting attacked from both, I think, the north and the south, and um, that those units have held in that city for the, for several fights. So I now understand the value of those high fortification levels. All right, um, so we're done with the fighting. I got no other units to move except for him. Guess we'll just gather rumors again. Yeah, I'm not getting any results anymore, so I think we're done up there. Maybe I'll move up to Violetville or the Gasdale Mine and check up there. We'll have a couple of heroes scattered around. Right now, I haven't gotten any heroes that are good governors or um, army leaders yet, so... I'm just using my primary crew to go into the dungeons and the other five gathering rumors. All right, let's, uh, let's head into the dungeon. It's that time. Enter. All right, so I think I said I was going to let this one auto-explore. Um, we've got a 3% chance each hero dies during the adventure. We've gone up to level 2 and we're in a low level, so I think it was 6% last time, 6 or 7 Um. So we'll go, uh, I'm going to say yes to this one and just let this one auto explore. Then we'll, when they're ready again in a couple of turns, we'll go to that other low dungeon and I'll do it, uh, where we actually go through it. Um, for folks that didn't see the first episode to see how this works. Uh, but I'm going to let this one auto complete and we're going to hope nobody dies. So I'm going to say yes to this auto resolve. The adventurer may auto explore again on failure. And we lost somebody. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Oh man. It's the XCOM 3%. <laughs> All right. You didn't tell me it was using XCOM math. <laughs> so, um, yeah, not cool. I guess it would have been better to do it manually. I, I don't have a feel yet for, uh, you know, <laughs> the uh, propensity of the AI to get me killed versus me keeping myself alive. The lesson learned, we just lost one of our wizards. Okay. Um, yeah, so Minor Blood Crystal was found in the adventure and set to the vault. We got some gold. We got some shards. Uh, we celebrated our victory and the death of Jonan and went to the local taverns and brothels. <laughs> Soothe our, our, our hurt nerves from uh, somebody dying. 
All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. So now we have, uh, where's the summaries? Fallen Heroes, Jonin, level two Magnus Wizard, a veteran battle mage, <laughs> slain by a bandit archer. Okay. Uh, let's see. No artifacts yet, of course. Um, and these guys. So Orion made it to three. Vimmel made it to three. So a couple of the guys made it to three. What's with the difference in XP? How does how does there be a difference in XP if the same people are going on the exact same adventurers? Uh, do does each character get like an XP bump for an actual kill? Do they get like a bonus above the others, or how does I don't know how the XP gets distributed? But I noticed that we had now it's happening again here where some of them are leveling faster than others, and they've all been on the exact same adventures. And I'm not sure if they're getting XP in other ways. I, I forgot to look. Okay. Well, so that's a bummer. Uh, so we do need to hire somebody. Unfortunately, I want a wizard type. We don't have a wizard type. I'm just going to wait. Based on stats. Oh, so there's a stat that controls XP gain. Uh, help file. Uh, is it under heroes stat? Is, is it mentioned in here? Like intelligence? I don't see the word experience anywhere in here. All their stats together. Hmm. Ah. All right. I just didn't run. I still don't see anything that says that. I, I believe you, of course, because you programmed it. But uh, I don't know if that's communicated anywhere. If it is, I don't remember seeing it. So if you get a better war, he needs more XP to advance than weaker ones? Okay. I guess that makes sense, given the, uh, um, the verity in, or disparity in uh, abilities when you're hiring you can have two warriors that look identical but they cost one cost more than another like in this situation he's got two two stats listed but he's less than the other guy so i know this guy is going to have higher stats than this guy is all right um so yeah i need a replacement and i'd like it to be a wizard we're just not seeing many we're overwhelmingly getting uh warriors on the list we'll see what we get next turn it'll be a few turns before that group's ready to do anything anyway so we'll have a little bit of time to recruit we'll gather some more uh oh yeah he's next turn uh we'll gather some more uh rumors while we wait um what else i gotta go take care of some food business so uh we're selling at 40 all right let's um sell uh twice we're heading into fall so um i also had a mystery on my food storage i don't know how it increased to 75 i never bought a granary and i don't know what i could have done that increased my food storage unless it's counting uh everfield it must be counting everfield because that's considered my property now i guess that mystery is solved actually you 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 have a granary ever field? Uh, trying to remember what I need to look at for that. Uh, districts. Nope, no buildings there. But it probably has inherent food storage, I assume. All right, that's got to be where it came from. Um, all right, back to economy. So uh, we're slowly growing our stockpile back up after I um. Bought the cavalry unit that's not quite ready yet. I can't afford anything else right now. We're heading into winter time. Um, I haven't played enough to know just what kind of balance I need, and I don't know how much how our food's going to do during the winter. Um, and I don't th when I hold tab, the mini map shows the uh, kind of the weather 
conditions for growing. Um, I don't know if the place we're in right here, we're kind of straddling these two lines right now. I don't know if um, we'll be fine through winter with this country, but other kingdoms like further up north would have much more of a struggle. Um, so we'll, we'll find out. So I'm not going to stress about it too much for now. So not going to worry about that. Uh, I don't really have... Well, I guess we've got stone enough to buy some things. We could do a granary. Let's do... Um, let's put one in an outlying area. So you guys aren't doing much. Let's put a granary here. All right. We'll consider that done for now. Let's go check our research. We haven't looked at that in a while. Still at 9 out of 30, 6 and 5 is the most we've got. I know it's diminishing returns the more guys you put into a particular area. I'm not sure if there's a sweet spot uh, of how many to put in to get uh, a somewhat more rapid advancement. I mean, we're 9 turns in and we're a, not even a third of the way through the first upgrade. Um, so, nothing really to change here. We did not get any new alchemists. Uh, diplomacy, we do have some, uh, some offers. Let's go look at those. Uh, there they are. Ock we are. So they want to offer us a trade agreement. Um, very weak, very weak. So we're not going to get a lot out of it, but I want to set up trade agreements with as many people as I can. So we'll say yes. That is it currently. Okay. And for us, wars. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, we have agreements and we are trading with a bunch of people. We're allied with Cardiar and Tarawan. Cardiar is the guy I'm trying to help over here. Tarawan's to my north. And I've left these guys, uh, I'm not diplom diplomatically engaged with these guys. That's uh, Morator. Um, so I wanted to leave a possibility for me to experiment and go invade somebody and see kind of how that works and what I need to do to prepare for that kind of thing. So... Uh, and they're not, they're not the nicest guys. So Tarawin's a good guy. Carger's a good guy. So we're playing good guys. So I'm trying to be, uh, appropriate. So a lot of trading, a lot of trading going on. <clears throat> and if we go take a look at the summary screen for achievements, um, I guess it's not, they're not an achievement for lots of trading. We've got the peace or alliance agreement. I want to be a a mercantile empire. <laughs> I want an agreement to trade with like half the map or something. Get me some achievement points. That kind of follows into those same categories. So if you can get uh, alignment or alliance and, and peace and so on, trade's usually fairly straightforward and easy to do. So I don't know. It might be double dipping. You might be, end up double dipping the, uh, the the point pool if you do it that way or give that one as well as uh, the Alliance one. And given that if you have the one, you're pretty much guaranteed to easily have the other. So, <clears throat> But if there's some other way of implementing it or pointing it out, that might be an interesting thing. But it would entertain me to be a uh, mercantile empire. All right, what else are we looking at? Uh, so battles, let's look at a battle summary. Uh, is this thing, I think it was top was most recent. Uh, fall of 524, summer, yeah, so top is most recent. Uh, so this is our fight that we did. We, we had to attack twice to uh, go into that battle. So uh, this would have been the first initial fight. So we have a commander advantage. Uh, led by Angun, and he had the default local commander. So we had an advantage there, which affects a few of the roles that we got later. Um, attacking strength. Oh, yeah, what is this? What is weak? Why is mine weak and his trained? I mean, I know he's got only swordsmen. Is the militia included in the group making it say weak, or what, what, what's the deal? I mean, I have triple his swordsman. Why is he trained and I'm weak? What's the, what's the despair or difference there? Um, but moving on, so our units, their units, and then the losses that were involved. 
Defender retreats. I don't have cavalry. I wish I had cavalry. That way I could have chased him down when he started his retreat and inflicted additional casualties. So there's more complexity than what is shown here and more than what I can describe with my current knowledge level of the game. It's an average of the total units. Okay, so this is an indicator of an average. So the militia is diluting our strength calculation. Um, just seems weird if I had like a thousand militia attacking. Yeah, sure, they're weak, but you know, <laughs> quantity has a quality of its own <laughs> is the, the famous maxim. <clears throat> Okay, uh, I think we're ready to go ahead and continue. Let's go ahead and uh, process the turn. I don't think I have anything else I need to do. Uh, our recruits won't be ready for another three turns, and because they are a trained unit, we can only deploy them at locations that have a barracks available or have a barracks built, um, whereas militia we can bring up at any of our locations. So three more turns, I'll be able to get them deployed. All right, let's go ahead and uh, hit end turn, see what happens. All right, turn summary. No events reported. Uh, 58 food produced. We're getting a little bit of winter effects again. 34, 48, we're at 61. So we're still growing. We got a 75 max. So we can go at least one more turn before I have to sell anything to prevent anything from rotting. Uh, nothing, nothing, nothing. Collaboration and trade report. So, all right, nothing interesting there. Uh-oh, they're pushing north again. So here come those cavalry units. So that's the one I hit earlier, I believe. Ooh, they're up in the hills. That's not good for me. Ah, he's back in there again. I don't have enough units. And <laughs> Cardiar is not helping. Uh, Cardiar, what are you doing over there, buddy? I can't, uh, I can't keep smacking three, four different enemy stacks. <laughs> this is not going to work. Uh, especially if he hides up in the hills for those defensive advantages. And as soon as I move off of Mariar, he goes, so I'm going to have to split my army, and I don't want to do that. Yeah, there is a difference between the uh, the delay between YouTube and Twitch. And only somebody watching both is going to notice. <laughs> Let's go. Hmm. I don't know what I'm going to do over here. I'm really worried about splitting my forces up. We have hurt these units. The cavalry had a turn or two to uh, recoup. And he, he hasn't stacked up yet. That's, uh... So you guys are resting in the inns, doing your thing. They're going to be doing that for another two turns. I guess we'll do that first, and I'll come back and look at this. So I wanted to check this other location. First, we got to enter this one. We got an extreme. Extreme is not one we're going to jump into. Next up, uh, you, we already know, is low. So that's our next target. Uh, you, uh, the hero, gather rumors. And you hop over and explore it. Another false rumor. Move to there. Oh, I always accidentally forget. <laughs> and I move the militia unit. Go back there. Good thing there's no entrenchment bonuses <laughs> that I just would have ruined by moving the unit out. You're supposed to go over there and gather rumors. These guys are working in tandem. One guy getting rumors, the other guy sitting in the area where they appear and exploring. 
Another false one. All right. Well, they're done. He's done. Uh, let's go check for new heroes. We got uh, the same we're always getting. So those are all normal. We still have yet to see a single adventurer. Um, it's not a warrior wizard. Damn it. I don't want any of those. I want a wizard to refill our group, our primary group, and then I want to leave the last slot open. We're capped at 12 currently until I can get some guilds built to increase our max, which will be a little while before I can put time into that and, and uh, resources. So... I think we're done playing around with heroes for the moment until my group is ready in a couple of turns to go on another adventure. Um, so what are we going to do over here? Am I going to split this up? I could split off like a swordsman and militia and um, hopefully go over here. There's no fortifications, but I really, really don't want to split my units up. Let's do it anyway. So we'll leave those. We'll take one swordman and one militia unit over here. I've got to, if if I can, or do I do it the reverse? I could actually, let's do it the other way. I think this would be better. We'll leave the swordsman and militia in place to defend the location, and we'll send the group over to do the fight. I think that makes more sense. Hopefully these guys, I don't know the comparative strengths when I just leave two units here. Is there any defensive bonus for being in a location, even if it doesn't have uh, an entrenchment value? I want to say from reading the rules, there's some kind of combat bonus, but I don't remember for certain. No? All right. Well, then I got to think about it again. <laughs> uh, it's having fortifications or nothing, huh? All right. Hmm. Counted it as a siege, so different casualty levels. Okay. I think I'm going to do it that way anyway. Let's let's give it a try. We're we're experimenting. We're new, so let's make mistakes and learn. For science, I'm going over here. All right. I don't think. I'm going to take that fight immediately. We'll wait till next round when I have uh, full movement points available to take the fight, and we'll see what happens here with these guys. I got to be able to cover a space to keep them from just keep running around me, and I move off, they take it, I move off, they take it type stuff. All right, so we're going to wait. Um, I think we'll think we're done then. So I don't need to sell food. I'm not going to try buying anything district wise. We're, we got enough stone for a few things. Our horse count is growing again. We've got a lot of wood. What can I focus selling wood on? Well, that's, I mean, I could sell it cause I don't know what I, what I need a lot of wood for. Um, and 30, the markets take a lot of wood. The council hall, I mean, it's uh, given how short I am of other materials where I have less production capacity, the wood is really not a concern. I need to be selling wood and then buying other materials. So let's, uh, let's do that. Let's go sell some wood. I think I'll just do that. Diminishing returns each time you click as the market uh, gluts. So you don't want to just keep selling. So we'll just sell a little bit at a time of stuff we've got too much of. So we got a granary started there. Most of the other towns are still a little too, too, too small. Can we do one more? Missing stone, missing two stone. All right, let's go buy 
stone. Uh, we'll buy three just to satisfy the need. All right, let's put up one more granary. And I think that's all the granaries I'm going to try to do this, this season. Turn our efforts elsewhere. Marabellus has got two more slots. We got our excavator done, so we upped our stone production. Stone and iron. Um, I don't know if I want to put a harvester in here or not. I want to save these other slots for things like a temple, which we need stone for again, and we're out of it now. Library takes even more. Yeah, stone's going to be the problem. Definitely not going to be a wood problem. Seems like our forested area. So is the way, are the way the kingdom's built, you have like default value set for the kingdom. I assume roughly based on like the terrain, like a lot of forests here in this place, a lot of stone in here. So if I control Morator here, would their natural stone production be higher? Because the way the economy works is you have set values that you have for income and then you do modifiers by building the buildings. So I hadn't done a test where I went and looked at the starting uh, resource conditions for other nations that uh, I would hope roughly conform to kind of their, their, their territory. Um, so if there's no stone in some area, then uh, they wouldn't have much stone production, but they might have a ton of wood or something. All different. All right. How does it handle... So in a situation like this, where I take ownership of a section of a country, for example, like if I came up and took the Howling Mine and Sword Break away from these guys, am I going to get a portion of their natural resource generation? Or do you have to take, do you have to conquer the whole kingdom for that to happen? Or does that even happen? <laughs> I haven't gotten that far into it yet. So I don't really know what happens when uh, you, you go and take stuff away or take out a whole kingdom. You get their resources minus modified by the descent. All right. And is it per location or is it you got to do the whole kingdom before that starts happening? When you conquer the whole kingdom. All right. Let's see. All right. Uh, am I done? I was looking at a lot of things. So we're still waiting on our cavalry. Uh, heroes are done. Battles are done. Summary's done. I uh, got no interesting diplomacy to do. Research. We did not get another alchemist. We did get a point in our harvester. I think we got a point in conviction magic. So even without anybody, we're gaining points, it looks like, because I never put uh, any people into most of these, so we're occasionally getting a small or a small chance of a point increase regardless. When you conquer all of them, their locations are now owned by you and descent goes away. All right. Cool. Progress marches forward. Uh, let's go ahead and just process the turn, I guess. And I'm most interested. Uh, this We're kind of in a holding pattern here, just getting some upgrades done and shuffling uh, a few heroes around, looking for lo locations and waiting for a sorcerer or an adventurer to show up. But most of the action I'm interested in is over here, so I can kind of learn how the combat works and um, the balance and the consequences and all that. So forward we go. There are diminishing returns, yes, for multiple researchers on a project. I don't know the percentages or the numbers, though. So. All right. Um, 58 produced. We're up to 67. Probably one more. I think we might. We're at winter dawn. So is it, is it three months per season? So you have a start to winter, winter, the end of winter, and then it goes into spring. I, I, I can't remember how many phases or how many months of each season. But maybe it's four. Oh, it is three. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll let this accumulate again. I won't sell any food since we're heading into winter. But it's feeling like we're going to be fine. 
I don't think. I mean, we're suffering winter effects and we're still producing more than we're building. So likely I'll be able to continue uh, selling uh, food on occasion. Uh, nothing, nothing, nothing. Trade report. All right. So nothing new there. One more turn on our recruits. Our heroes are still uh, having fun. The five survivors are still having fun in the brothels and taverns. Uh, our new heroes. Hey, it does happen. <laughs> Recruit. <laughs> An adventurer showed up. The first one. Uh, I still don't have a, a wizard. So hopefully by next turn we get a wizard. Otherwise, I'm, I'm sending the group out, even without one. So the reason I'm happy to see the adventurer is they're kind of the, uh, the, the thief uh, adventurer specialists. They help get more money from the dungeons. And they are also the specialists in spotting and then disabling traps that will hurt the whole party if you just stumble through them. So I want to have at least one adventurer in the group. Uh, thought ring. So plus one intelligence and a minor blood crystal. Strength and armor. A hollow crystal containing magical tarragon blood. Depending on the age of the creature when slain, it bestows various enhancements. The blood must be collected within seconds of the creature's death, sealed and cooled to keep its properties. Only one elder tarragon has been slain in history. Well, I want that crystal. <laughs> I want his crystal. All right. So... We've got two conserver block specialists for the Holy Warriors. Uh, I really don't want a warrior. I got a lot of warriors floating around. I, I want the other ones. I almost always have two warriors and then one extra. One, the third one is usually variable. Uh, so who in our current group? So Vimal is three. Vimal's the warrior with... So this is armor and strength. Uh, you're at eight strength and six armor versus Yanthus at six and seven. I don't know whether it's going to be better to fill shortcomings. So give it to the guy who's got less values or just to supercharge somebody. Go doom stack supercharge on certain characters. I'll probably lean for the first run to uh, supercharging somebody, really jack up their stats. So let's go ahead and give this one to Vimal. He's got no items currently. Three slots for items, weapon, armor, and they call it a mine slot for the third one, kind of an accessories mine slot. And the thought ring, uh, which is uh, intelligence. Yeah, intelligence. I guess Orion, your default, going to get that one. Seven. Intelligence is used by others, but, uh, you know. Uh, hey, Davern. Apparently, I do have my replacement ready to go here. Um, yeah, we'll give it to you. All right, so we do have my six-person groups. We got. A, I forgot I had a sorcerer that we had recruited bef uh, after I sent the last group out. So I'll just have to keep an eye out and make sure we grab uh, either another adventurer or another sorcerer. They seem to be the ones that are harder for me to get hold of here in this kingdom. Aegis, Sorcerer, Lowers Resist, and Immune, and Creative. Oh, that's right. I could make him... I assume... So with a, uh, with a bonus like Creative, with a bonus to Research, does that only get put into play when he's the governor of a territory or of a location? And then does it matter where he's a governor? Or is this just because I fired him, I'm getting a 5% Research boost? <laughs> I talked my way through like two or three possible things, though, which was correct. <laughs> That's the one problem with this kind of a answer thing. Put him in a larger location. All right. So I'd have to put him as governor at like Marabilis or something in order to get the, the, the boost. I need him in the dungeons, I think, at the moment more than I need a 5% research boost. <clears throat> so, good to know, though. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we're not selling any food. Um, we're back to uh, wood, going back to 57, though. So, let's sell some of that again. And uh, I think 
We'll buy a little bit of stone. Try to speed that up. And what's crystals going for? 160. No, I think I'll hold off on that. Um, so hmm, we've actually got enough to get another unit out. I'd love to get the armored knights, but the iron, the iron needs. Oh my god, iron. So hard to get iron. That stuff's expensive. Um, let's go with. Yeah, I mean, oosh, everything is so expensive. Plus, I have to have ongoing costs and so on to deal with. Um, I'm going to hold off again. Right now, our only fight is over here, which is... Actually, I need to go look at. So, what happened? So, he moved away. Uh, X control. That's still Cartier. So, are there... I mean, it's fortification three. I'm assuming that's why he has not taken that or tried to take that. But it, I can't see any of Cartier's units there to defend the location. All right, well, we're doing this fight. Yeah, see, this I have a problem with. So now I've pushed him out, but now it's me leaving a location. So I'm sallying forth from a, a siege location, which gives me a big negative. Plus he's in the forest, which gives him a defensive bonus. It's almost like you're punished for winning the fight and moving in. I can't really pursue him in this case to try to finish him off because I'm taking a bunch of negatives now. Hmm. Um, but that accomplishes what I wanted to accomplish for the moment. So all three of these regions are now either controlled by me or controlled by Cartier. Um, so if I can get him to retreat next turn when we process the turn, leave... Oof, I might leave just a militia unit in each, reform, and then try to pursue to the border and keep putting pressure on him to push him south. All I really want to do, if I can manage it, is push to Jiri and then kind of hold him in the south if I can hold Jiri. But I have no idea diplomatically when Cartier and them are going to say, okay, let's stop fighting now <laughs> since I'm not in control of the primary fight uh, with them. They have to still be at war in order for him to have units up in... I'll actually know this is my territory now. I guess I got to make sure they're still at war. Uh, so diplomacy, Cartier, they are, uh, yeah, they're still at war with Aminon. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll keep helping as much as I can and we'll keep learning, but I don't want to commit to another fight there with those, those odds. Yeah, Alvaro, the uh, the Twitch audience is going to be much larger because I have been streaming live there for seven years and live streaming on YouTube is a fairly recent thing because Twitch changed their rules and now allow multi-streaming. So prior to the rules change back in November, I couldn't live stream to both. Um, so my YouTube audience isn't used to me live streaming, basically. So they're not inherently <laughs> ready to dive in and watch the live stream as opposed to watching the VOD after the fact. That's why there's a big disparity there. Okay. Let's, uh, so yeah, that's my thinking. That's my plan. We're going to, we're going to wait, be satisfied with us retaking control. We now hold these two. I think he'll, I, I doubt with the strength he's got left that he'll be able to take that. Hopefully we'll see what happens. But, um, if he retreats, we'll try to pursue. I'll leave a militia unit on each as a kind of a fallback defense. And then we'll try to pursue and cut off anything coming north. 
Okay, what else? Uh, heroes. So, still waiting. Um, done the economy. I'm not doing districts. Research. We have not yet got another alchemist. Not much of a change there. I don't think we got any offers. Looks like no. Yeah, let's go ahead and just process the turn. A fight. Cardiar is doing things. Well, there's that Silverwood again. Holding. Oh, the fortification is zero. The fortification is zero. The Silverwood finally going to go down. All right, production at 100%, 60 food produced. We we maxed out our, uh, I think we have a larger max now because we technically control two of Cartier's areas. <laughs> There's no way for me to hand them back to them, is it? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't have a, I don't have a function that allows me to hand these back to poor Cartier. My being his ally and coming to help him in his war means I'm going to own all his territory by the time we're done. I did build the granary, but is it done yet? I don't know if it's done yet. I'll have to go look. It takes a few turns usually. We'll we'll find out. Um, so we're at seventy six. It's uh, it's middle of winter, so this this nation apparently is not going to really have to worry much about the food needs it, currently. As we take more territory, it might become uh, more of an issue. But uh, no jumps in research. No improvements have been made. Uh, diplomatic. Not collaborating. So I, I keep getting these Everfield messages, and now it says Descent is at Revolt and Descent is at Rabble. I'm not real sure what I can do about that. I haven't investigated that part of the mechanics. And then all of our trade stuff. So, you know, we got zero, they got four. We got zero, they got four. <laughs> these are all those tiny nations where we're much bigger than them, and, uh, you know, they're making bank off of us. Okay, nothing there. So he did what I what I was expecting him to do from prior experience at least. He did pull that unit back. So I am going to leave the militia and you. Uh, I think I have weather turned off. Oh yeah. Hi there, rain. Or is it it's not snow this far south? So we've got uh, a storm going on. Is the storm lowering my movement rate? Because that seems a lot slower. I forget all the values that will affect movement rates. Does the help file mention weather? So military unit effects. Storm. Uh, Plus two movement costs per space, I'm assuming, in a storm area. So yeah, that's why we're severely limited. I guess we're just going to hold tight for a turn or two while the storm's in the area. So, naval spotting chance modifier, cover range, defending a location. Boo! 40% defending a location bonus. <laughs> Bring the storm when we're on a siege or under siege. 85% foraging rate. Cool. I don't think we have a forage problem, uh, so we still have supply, so no problem there. I'm tempted to bring a unit down to squat on Baron Keep, since that seems to be some focus. But I'm worried about him kind of end running around me to come back to this. Let's leave the militia, and we'll. Uh, oh, I can't even get to it. Ah, uh, screw it. Never mind. I'll just let it sit. No, I'm just going to hold the positions, I think. So we'll wait. Between the two of us, we've got all of the locations. And we'll, uh, we'll see how the weather works next turn and then push. We're giving him turn to recover, but oh well. Um, let's go look at the other things. So recruits. So the button is lit up indicating a status change and we need to go pay attention. So we click on that and our light cab is ready. 
We click on it. It shows where we can deploy it. And the reason it deploys to these two spaces is these two have barracks. So trained units, anything other than militia, essentially, you have to have a barracks in order to deploy. So we'll go ahead and uh, deploy it here. And um, we'll get moving and try to join up with the army as quick as possible. We have our cav unit that I spent like <laughs> eight turns desperately trying to get the materials for. <laughs> hundred horses. It's a lot of horses. Okay. It's got some pretty important benefits from what I remember in reading the rules in regards, especially to when you force a unit to retreat, the cav can do kind of an overrun. Um, and you get bonuses to inflicting additional cal uh, additional um, casualties during the retreat of the enemy. Um, so hopefully we see some of that. Uh, so that's done. Let's go check our hero list. Hey, look, it's warrior, warrior, warrior again. That's uh, that's pretty common <laughs> for these guys. But our heroes are ready to go. So let's form up our adventuring party. Uh, where is everybody? So where did the heroes go doing their adventuring? Uh, oh, they're, they're really, wait a minute. They were hanging out in the brothels and the bars, but now they're back where the dungeon was. That doesn't make any sense. Is that uh is that a bug or a feature? <laughs> so they went on the adventure. They finished it. The one guy died. Then they disappeared for two turns. And now they're uh, supposedly uh, hitting the taverns and the brothels, but now they're back out in the wilderness where the fight occurred. Are they supposed to have been moved to either a nearby town or the capital? Or is it normal for them to return back to where they were, they were partying? Either way, we're going to get them moving to the next low adventure location. So let's go check this one. Maybe we'll get lucky. Nope, we did not get lucky. All right, so you go back over here, check again. Um, well, all right. Hmm. So we've got a low here. It's going to take us two turns to get to it, I guess. Nothing prevents us from checking this one on the way past. Well, now we have a problem, because if I enter it, we're going to end our turn instead of me continuing to move. Hmm. Uh, entering it's not a problem. It's just that if I leave it after checking how tough it is, then uh, our turn is going to end. It'll use up all my remaining movement points. So it's a question of do I have this group check? And stop their turn here, and then take two turns to get to the next one, when it's one that's too tough for us. Or do I just continue on, do that one, and let this guy check these two, and then come back again? Given the ratios I've seen, I think I'm going to assume this one's not a low, and I'm just going to keep moving with this group. And I need to get this guy down to them anyway, so... Uh... Uh, they're both going. I want to, I want to mix them both in. So we're going to pull somebody else out of that group. I should have left somebody there. I forgot. I was going to have both of these guys join the party, but they'll meet up at the low dungeon. We'll just move them into the road there. All right. Uh, they do pop back up where they started. All right. I'm fine with it. It just narratively feels a little odd to get the message that, uh, you know, they're, they're hitting the bars and the brothels and then uh, have them all of a sudden back out in the wilderness again. Having them be moved to the nearest uh, valid location or owned controlled location probably be better. Okay, done moving, done moving. Uh, you not done moving. Um, oh, other rumors. That's right. We got our tag team duo here. <laughs> he investigates and he jumps on all the question marks. Go there first. Explore nothing. Explore nothing and explore. Wow. Triple nothing. 
All right. A little rough. Got all of them. Still got you with more turns. Let's bump you up here. All right, a couple more. Now we do have a location. What is the graphic? That's a different graphic. Instead of the little dungeon entrance with the uh, the gate, we've got uh, a little crumbled wall or parapet looking thing. Hey, another low. Awesome. That's what I was hoping for. All right. So that means we've got two low right next to each other. Our uh, approaching adventuring group is going to be busy. And we got two more to investigate with this guy next turn. And he'll, uh, I think we might be maxed out, about maxed out with uh, this area. We'll see what happens. Now I think everybody's done. Um, I could. He's only got three points left. He can't get to another town to investigate or get rumors again. So these guys are joining these guys in the dungeons and he's doing his thing. All right. Yep. We're done there. Uh, economy. We're sitting on 76 food. We are still, even in middle of winter, gaining more than we're eating. So let's go ahead and uh, sell a bit just so we don't have any go rotten. Then, uh, continue to sell wood. Man, we make a lot of lumber. I mean, I'm selling 20 a turn, and we're gaining back. Uh, what are we gaining on wood? Yeah, we're gaining 20 a turn. I didn't really appreciate just how much lumber we're producing in this kingdom previously till I saw the number get big, and now I'm starting to investigate after playing a few more turns. So, yeah, 60 food produced even during wintertime. All right, uh, yeah, let's sell some more. We'll just keep selling 20 a turn. We'll get our, our cash each time. And let's buy, what are we up to for cash? 600, let's buy one of that and one of that. I wanna keep a few hundred on hand for, um, for emergency money. And uh, let's see. Do we want to try to pick up another one? We're up to 52 the nights. We only need 70 and we're gaining uh, 11 a turn. So in two turns, we'd be okay there, but we're going to be short. Even if I'm buying iron regularly, we might get there in two or three turns and get one more cavalry unit. I'd love to get this and then turn my attention to like getting one siege weapon. Um, I know nothing about the, uh, the naval stuff yet. It looked fairly complex in regard to movement and detection. Um, there's, there's a few mechanics in there that I haven't had time to look at and investigate. So we'll get to that point at some point, but it is more complicated than just building a unit and then moving the tile around. There's, there's quite a few other things in play there. All right. Uh, yeah, we'll hold off on building anything here. How about districts? So, uh, Mirabilis, what am I going to do with those last two slots? Would love to get a library in. That gets us an increase in our max alchemist plus an increase in the recruitment chance. 70 stone, huh? That's, uh, that's a ways away. A stone is what's killing me. I just can't generate stone in quantity. All right, let's keep building. We'll keep buying and selling for a bit. I'll try to get uh, some of that stuff up. I think we're, we're no longer going to build uh, <laughs> we build granaries for these guys. They're not going to have a food problem. At least not until something happens in regards to weather or an invasion or, or something else. Puts pressure on us in another direction. Uh, so that granary did complete. And I did not build another one anywhere. I don't think so. All right. Uh, diplomacy, no offers. Summaries, I'm not worried about yet. Heroes, we've dealt with, and no recruits. All right, time to process the turn.
How are they surviving with the fortification level back down to zero? I forgot to go look at them. I meant to go look at that. Is it actually zero? What's reducing the fortification level, by the way? Um, siege engines? What, what else would reduce the fortification level? I'd have to go look at the uh, combat details again. Uh, 63 produced. Winter effects have reduced, reduced our production, but we're still fine. Uh, we're still below our cap, but I will sell again at least once this month. Uh, gold upkeep's not being a problem. Nothing going on there. And our trade report. All right. So I want to go look at this real quick. So, yeah, that used to be a, a a big number. Four or five, I forget what it was. But they're down to zero. Help file. Uh, military. Surrounded sieges and fortification. Uh, so an attack against a location is called a siege. An attack from a location is a sortie. When the enemy units occupy all land hexes around a unit under siege, they become surrounded. I have yet to see the AI try one of these. I mean, there's two out of six here. Maybe we, maybe it's early game and there just aren't enough units on the, the field. But I, so if you had a large doom stack and then you, you sorted it out to surround something completely, you'd get the surrounded bonus, but then you'd make a particular location easier to sortie out and fight against. So. It's a, a fairly interesting tactical decision you'd have to make there, but is it really just the unit count that's preventing that kind of thing currently with any of the fights going on? I'm not sure there are any other larger scale fights going on right now. Scale's pretty low at the moment. Oof, man, how'd you like to try to invade that territory? <laughs> Damn. Uh, still no activity from those guys that I'm aware of. Yeah, this is, uh, there, there's a few other fights going on, but this is the only one I find fairly interesting. Uh, so back to the list here. Um, fortification, defend against siege attacks by reducing damage from the attacking army. One fort level is destroyed when the attacker gets a breach result. Siege weapons increase the chance of a breach. All right, so I was right in that siege weapons would do it, but it sounds like there's a lesser chance of it happening anyway during the fight. Fortifications remove damage applied based on the level. Each fortification level has a 7% chance of any damage being reduced to zero. So they had like a level four or five fortification originally um, in that spot. But it suffered attacks and attacks and attacks. And uh, I'm going to assume, hopefully, there's a siege unit in here somewhere, maybe. I can't see the area, the fights, so I just know there's fights going on, but I can't tell the exact details. All right. And weather effects on terrains and cover, land combat rounds, naval combat, naval missions, and there's the whole naval detection patrolling thing, which I'm not going to get into right now. Lots of unit attributes, unit specialties, which we haven't seen or dealt with yet. A lot of cool stuff. So very, very useful uh, help file in game. There is a PDF link that it'll go to for the actual rule book as well. But this does a fair job of, uh, you know, pretty quickly getting you the information you want for whatever category you need information on. Appreciate having options for both. All right. Are we done? I think we're done, right? Um, no, we're not done. We just started. <laughs> Let's see. So, we still have a storm. Do we push forward? I still can't get to that. But this also means they're going to have movement problems as well. So, I don't expect them, other than maybe their cav unit, might be able to reach around behind me. But I'm going to assume they can't. I'm still going to leave the militia unit. Let's see, where can both of you get to? That space and that space. All right, I'm going to have you guys meet up over here. We'll leave the militia, you go here, leave the militia, you go here, and then next turn we'll try to come south a bit and see if there's anybody we can go harass on our way to taking Jiri. If I can just march this army to Jiri and force him to deal with me, that would be good, but likely he'll march right past me. And then you, you know, <laughs> slogging through a rainstorm, get over there. 
All right, armies are done for the round. Time to go adventuring. So that group there, we need to leave somebody behind. Gonna be, how do we do this? So typically I've been going two warriors, two healers, and two sorcerer types. So I won't be able to maintain that. We got a sorcerer and an adventurer coming in. So either I need to, I need to lose one of a category. So, I think, uh, do we go healing light? I'm not sure what the real, real balance is going to be. Levels might make the distinction as well. Level two warrior, level two druid. Um, let's leave the healer behind for this one. So, we're going to go the rest of the group there. You're going to join. You're going to keep searching, and there. False rumor. So that leaves that guy getting rumors from the local cities. These two chasing them down, and this one's kind of generating his own rumors and going and looking for them. So let's do this. A medium. You gonna be able to get any more? Nope. I think he's done for the moment. Let's uh let's move back this way. We'll give it a try over here once he has movement. Oh, once again I moved the damn militia. <laughs> Dang it. I hate it when I do that. Okay, well, we got a few adventures to go on. Hopefully this one pans out to be a low. Um, nothing for you to do at the moment, or for you. Let's uh, go here. Go. I'm just going to sit him out here. Yeah, not getting anything. All right, in we go. Try not to get them killed. This time we're going to do it. Uh, we're going to actually go through ourselves and uh, take on the dungeon. So we're back to two single level, first level folks. Uh, we're adding the adventurer and the sorcerer. So enter. We are not going to auto explore. 26 total enemies in the dungeon. A forest hollow. So this is old old, old school uh, blobber style back uh, way back in the wizardry, might and magic, bard's tale type days, the original releases uh, back in the 80s and 90s, early 90s type time frame. Um, so we just pick a direction where we're going to explore. Passage leads below the ground. Let's go to the right first. <laughs> All right. If you're still around, Alvaro, we have a Tophi Hall. I assume that's supposed to be a Trophy Hall. Uh, if you're not still around, I'm going to screenshot it. I'll just screenshot that part. Tophi Hall. All right. Uh, so a singular long corridor extending for a great distance. Wall crevices are lined with pedestals that are dusty and empty. Any treasure they held has long since been looted. All right, so we have three searches. I think the adventurer added a search. And we're down to 16 heals. Ouch. We were at 23, 24, I think, when we had the other guy. How does that work mathematically? Maybe we were at 32. I, I don't remember what our total was when we started an adventurer into the dungeon. Uh, but for folks that didn't see the previous episode, we've got some resistances and some stats up here. The characters and their abilities are giving us a uh, defense bonus, giving us resist bonus. The count of druids and clerics is giving us how many heals after combat we can do to bring our party back up to full strength. Um, this is for penetration of certain types of enemies that have um, tough skin and hides and so on. And this is for the same thing, but for magical type stuff. And then we have a certain number of searches we can perform, which is a button down here. I don't know wh what would trigger clicking search or not clicking search in a particular area, though. I don't know how that actually affects things. 
So, we'll wait for what seems to be a more interesting spot before we do anything. We should get a fight here in not too distant future. Yeah, we have a fight. We got to the interrogation chamber. Uh, so we have three enemies. The Magcap Hunter, the Lassertillian Stalker, and the Dream Eater. I haven't seen a Dream Eater yet. So, six hit points, six hit points, 11 hit points. And they each have uh, background uh, flavor text. They have, uh, you know, a picture and their stats and abilities. Um, so this guy I'm curious about. Ooh. Funny looking bug head guy. He's got the resist magic, the lower resist and resistances and immunities, and he is himself resistant. All right. Um, yeah. He's got 11 health, 11 melee, and 12 magic. He's actually pretty powerful. He's, he's pretty well-rounded. Uh, I'm not going to read all of the flavor text on all of these guys, but just realize it's here. Feel free to read it if you'd like. Now we have a couple of options. Uh, what we do here for combat is we pick our, one of our characters and they've automatically got certain options that they're going to do for combat. And it's just picked from these lists of options down here. Depending on the type of character, they'll have different choices. So like my warriors have evade, block, which is actually block and taunt kind of combined. It increases their defense. They huddle up behind their shield, but it also draws, I want to say two hits. So they'll be the target of like the first two hits that the enemy uh, performs. So they get an increase in defense and it draws attacks onto them, which if they've got high defense and good hit points, it would be a good thing. So we've got that if we feel we need it. We got Bash, which uh, drops the damage to a single point, but it attempts to stun the enemy. And there's a magical version of this that uh, the other characters have, uh, Spellbind. Same thing, same idea, but it uh, stuns the enemy. Um, and then we have Melee Attack, and we're, we're focusing on the melee, and we get a plus two to hit when we do that. So basically, you just pick an option for the characters, and or you just take what, you've, what it's selected automatically, and you hit Fight. And then it's going to fight automatically. It'll pick targets and they'll fight and damage will be done and stuns will occur and all that. And then it goes to the next round and we just keep cycling through. Uh, at each point, uh, after everybody's gone, we'll have the opportunity to change our options to whatever else we want. Um, our cleric does have a heal option. Um, so the druid here is our, our healer. So we have a heal and it'll heal three points. There's a limit on the number of in-combat heals, I believe, and I'm not sure where that limit shows uh, or how you know. <laughs> so, ah. All right. Oh, I see. Uh, Alvaro went, uh, took, took, a, took a walkabout. <laughs> okay. Uh, when he shows back up again, um, remind me about the, uh, the, the typo and uh, the question about uh, searching and in combat healing. Those are my three questions. So you guys, you guys remember for me. Um, so let's go ahead and fight. Let's do uh, sorcerer. I don't know how dangerous these guys are, really. I, I usually do. Let's have our main warrior here, Yanthus, with the ten defense. Let's do. Uh, let's do a, a block taunt with him. I'm gonna do a bash with him. And then we'll just let the uh, the other guys do their combat stuff. So if I hit... The difference between fight and quick fight is just the speed of the animations, basically. So if I hit fight, you'll be better able to kind of watch the matchup. So symbols will appear to show who's attacking who. Quick fight, it just kind of goes by in a quick blur so you can get on with things. Um, but I'll do fight first. Hey. Whoa. <laughs> we... We flat killed him, then we bashed and killed. Uh, no damage to our side. Oh, one damage. Yanthus took a single point. So, all right, let's not to worry about defense this time. Let's go out, all out attack. Everybody go after him. Man, he got a hit in. That Dream Eater is uh, not playing around. Um. Let's do an in-combat heal. And uh, enemy is dead. I didn't get any pop-ups about uh, loot or treasure found. Oh, there they are. <laughs> Gold one, charge three. And then we did one of our out-of-combat heals. 
All right, so the party's back up to full strength, and we continue on. we still got 23 spawns to go. Now, at any point after a fight, I could just hit leave, and we pop out of the dungeon, and then we could uh, finish resting for the round, and it resets things, and then we could go back in again. So we have that option. It just, you know, takes a turn, and it's going to take longer to get through the dungeon. So ideally, we want to go all the way through it in one run and not take multiple turns to do it. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do one of my searches here. Let's just keep moving. All right. The Ominous Chamber. Um, the worn, painted figure of a crucified man above the archway leaves a chill to the bone as to what follows entering this passage. So we can go north or south from here. Um, I really don't know if the flavor text has any connection to chances for searching or if it gives you clues to the, the dungeon areas in any way. I'm unsure of that. Let's just keep moving for now. I'm going to go north first. A connecting passageway. And a larger fight. The split passage that does not split. <laughs> well, I guess it splits. It goes back to where we came or it keeps going north. I'm not sure I would call that a split passage. That's more of a continuing passage. An intricate silver and stone tablet is the centerpiece of the area drawing the eyes to its chiseled structure. Blood stains can be seen at a distance on the table. Two passages lie on the other side in darkness. An unwelcoming place. All right, so now we've got a mag cap as well as a mag cap beast. He looks not friendly. Their bodies are plated or have thickened bone from its skeletal mass. So, yeah, he's got the tough melee reduction. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a pretty tough front end. He's got a 10 melee rating. Uh, only three armor, which feels weird, but he gets the natural resistance. So this kind of thing is where we want the penetration stuff. Um... So that weaken lowers the tough and impenetrable traits. So he's got tough. So our our warlock ability here is what, uh, or if we had any, that would help us. We don't have any, unfortunately. So he's going to absorb a lot. Okay. Um, let's see. We should probably be a little more cautious in this fight. So let's do the taunt again and the stun again. Um, hmm. I really <laughs> that that those are your choices all right Geary <coughs> I haven't gotten any use out of you yet you silly adventurer person you either evade or melee attack huh it's fine um counter spell I don't think we're getting much spell action out of these guys so let's not do counter spell do we attempt to get a double stun, a magic version, plus the melee version? So we can thin him out a bit? Yeah, let's do that. We'll do a stun and a stun. We'll draw attention onto our highest hit point and armor and defensive value warrior. Let's go with that. Oh! We got spellbound. Not cool. Who who landed the spellbound on me? Did the Magcap have magic? He's got a magic rating of eight. Yep, they use magic. All right, that'll learn me. <laughs> Here I said no. Let's not do the counter spell. Time to switch off of spellbind onto counter spell. No more of that nonsense, please. Now I don't have access to him for the turn. Um, let's go block on you, draw attention here, make sure nothing, oh, hopefully nothing goes after our weaker guys, and everything else stays the same. Hey, Druid, why are you on heal? I don't want you on heal, I want you on magic attack. I wonder if the stun makes them more susceptible to taking hits. I'm not sure. It prevents them from taking an action for the turn, but I don't know if it also makes them gives them some kind of defensive negative. 
Um, so let's switch back. You stun. You continue to taunt. Uh, Adept or Druid. Go ahead and heal him. That's our only damage so far. We didn't get much else accomplished. Um, yeah. Hmm. Well, um, we're not winning. <laughs> they took no damage. We took another set of damage. All right. There we go. Beast is out. Somebody, somebody must have got a crit. Somebody got a critical hit. And we got two gold. Um, all right, with those two left, let's go off a of defensive mode. Let's go all out attack for a round. We're back to full, uh, not quite full health. Yeah, he, 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 he's doing the taunt and he's paying the price. He keeps taking hits. All right. Let's, um, I think I'm going to hold off on the healing. Let's go full attack this round. Everybody go after him. I'm going to do a quick fight on this one. All right, no damage beyond what we had already. So now we have a slay option that has come up. So when there's wounded enemies, you can switch to a slay mode. And it basically makes sure it goes after whoever is the weakest. So it's a way of focusing and attacks. Uh, not necessary in this case. Somebody got a crit. <laughs> whoever landed that first shot. All right, gold shard, and we did some more out-of-combat healing. We're down to only five. No way we're going to get through 19 more with only five out-of-combat heals. So we'll have to uh, change that. Uh, well, I mean, the druid's got 13 magic power, so I, I don't know. When you ask, is the druid better with melee attacks? No? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to guess. <laughs> I don't know the combat system in detail yet. I'm playing from a kind of a high level point. I don't know all the maths involved in um, all the combat calcs. We'll get to that point eventually. But Oh, that's the adept. Uh, yeah, the druid. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. Uh, healing 18, melee 8, magic 4. Um, I don't know if that's the only consideration. Because another consideration is the target you're trying to go after and whether they're resistant to a certain type or not. And I didn't consider this in the calc, so you could be completely correct. But it's not just which number is bigger on this side. It could also be factored by what they have for their values um, as well. So it's possible he's better to be on uh, melee attack. Or she, the case may be. Uh, let's go ahead and do at least one more fight, though. We'll keep moving. So north again. We hit a dead end. Chamber of Sorcery. A large pit draws attention to the center of the room. Passengers lead, or passages lead to balconies on either side of the chamber. Wax lies melted in once. Wax lies melted in once was candle holders. What was once candle holders? All right, another typo. Uh, that section right... Oh, I better grab the whole sorcery section. Do 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 do. Alright, um, so let's go ahead and search here. Let's see what if anything happens. So we'll hit the search button. Uh, I'll even highlight the guy that's supposed to do this. I don't think it makes a difference, <laughs> but... There is nothing to be found. Well, that's sad making. Alright, let's go back the other way. A foul room. A library. Ooh, triple madcap hunters. All right. Um, am I bug reporting? Oh, yeah, I've been bug reporting steadily. 
I always bug report when I play these smaller project games. See you, Ivan. Have a good one. The developer just went to take his dog for a walk. He'll be back on the stream here in a few, so we'll just tell him or I'll, I'll submit it on the Discord after I'm uh, done with the live stream, whichever. Okay, uh, so we got the Madcap Hunters in quantity. Uh, these guys are... Uh, they don't look terribly scary. Um, yeah, they're standard low-level warrior types. All right, uh, the Magcap is who I need to get rid of. He does have the magic, so he's the one that I got to watch out for. I can't focus him directly, though. So what shall we do? Um, I think I'm just going to go in full uh, full attack round, full attack mode. We'll go ahead and switch the uh, the druid over to melee. But otherwise, let's see what happens when we go full attack mode for a round. Took a couple of hits. So that's going to take away a few things. Let's go one more. One, two, three guys are now hit. Let's switch the druid to heal mode. Three gold and healed for two. We're down to one heal after combat. Fifteen to go. Yeah, it's going to take at least one more trip in. We won't finish it this run. It would probably be wise just to bounce right now and then come back in to finish it with full heals available instead of pushing on because we're definitely not going to get to the end. So no point in putting our guys in danger more than necessary. So let's go ahead and hit search one more time. Nothing to be found, and we'll hit leave. All right, we'll pop back into the dungeon afterwards. They stay in place until they're fully uh, explored and all the enemies killed and, and so on. Then they disappear. Uh, and we have to clear them. There is a limit to how many an area can have, so we have to clear them to basically refresh the gathering rumors options to uh, have more spawn. Um, ideally, we want to get... Uh, as many of the guys as we can up to about level three before I start poking my nose into the medium level dungeons. And those will probably take multiple trips in and out even at that stage. So um, that's what we're going to try to do. All right. I think we're done with all of the guys. So that's all of the heroes action we can do for the round. Uh, our military is done. I think we did all the other things. We have no recruits. Hero action. Warrior, warrior, warrior. What is that? Oh, a farmer bonus. So the problem I have is this. We're capped at 12 heroes. You want six in a dungeon. So you could at max have two groups cycling into dungeons, but one of the groups is usually going to be, well, depending on if you do it manually or if you do the auto where they then go on break for a couple of turns, simulating how long it would have taken you to do it manually anyway. Um, but you need some also generating rumors. Heroes are also used as governors for the cities. So if you get a hero like this with a farmer bonus, then he can govern a location. You put him on a location, you tell him to govern, and preferably one where that activity is going to be useful. Um, and you get a bonus for them being a governor of the area for whatever stats he has. And then they're also used as leaders for armies. So you got a lot of different functions for the heroes. And if I start splitting people off to be governors, then I can't put full groups into the dungeons. So we can raise the cap by building guilds, but it takes up a slot in our limited number of slots that our various locations have available. Plus, those take a huge amount of resources to build. <laughs> so we can get more uh, and we can have a higher cap. But until I do, I'm kind of kind of stuck right now i've got a weird mix because i've only got one group hitting the dungeons and then i've got everybody else just kind of scattered around trying to generate them 
it'd be great to get like two guilds built so I can have two people generating new uh, rumors, one person generating, one person investigating, and then have two full groups going into the dungeons clearing faster or giving me a couple of extras that I can, if I do run across one like this, that I can put in as governors or if we get a warrior with a high leadership skill, put him over as the uh, leader of one of my armies. Anything above six is going to be better than not having a leader. So, yeah. Like Vimmel here, he's only got leadership six, so he would not be a good one to pull off. Yanthus is an eight, uh, seven, seven, nine. So that's a pretty good upgrade. And they don't have to be necessarily the, uh, the warrior types, but ooh, there's a 10 with Darwin. Also Geary. And an 11. <laughs> Why is my adept got an 11 leadership? That's funny. No, you can't have them, armies. The healer is for the adventuring party. Ah, so this is the first game I've played of this, by the way, for folks that might have just joined in. So I do not yet have a feel for time frames or resource usage over time, meaning how much I'm generating, how much things cost. I don't have a good feel for all that yet. I know the mechanics of how things work, but I haven't played enough yet to get a good idea of just how long things are going to take to do, how much maintenance is required to maintain like larger unit count armies in the field. All that stuff is still uh, to come through just gameplay and experience. So, oh, Alvaro's back. <laughs> we got questions. I took some screenshots of some typos we found in the dungeon. I'll just send you those on the Discord when I'm done streaming. Uh, but I did have a couple of questions. Uh, first up, the uh, the search button, the search total. It, how do you know when to use the search stuff? W why or what would trigger you to say, okay, we're going to search this location? Does the flavor text of the room give you a clue? Or is it just totally random? And it doesn't matter where you search. You just have X number of searches and there's a chance you'll get something. I'm not sure which it is. If I need to be carefully reading the room descriptions or if that's always just purely flavor text, or if it gives hints. So that's one of them. And then the other one was um, in, in combat healing. Is there a limit to how many times you can heal in combat? And if so, where does it show the limit? No clues. You want to pick rooms more than corridors. All right. I did. I have found things with the search option in the, I think it was the first episode. We did find a secret door. I think it was in the middle of a corridor though. And it actually, the, above the flavor text, the description said hidden something or other, but it said hidden multiple times. And I don't think we got a result on the other ones that we checked. But we did find a secret door that went to one room, which was trapped <laughs> and had a golem waiting for us. Uh, but yeah. Three points, one heal each healer. Wait, what? I don't understand that. This is the in combat heals. I'm going to go ahead and process the turn while we uh, we chat about that stuff. Oh, I know that. I know they have the action to heal once per healer per round. I thought there was a limit to how many times they can do that action over the course of the combat, though. So if I just permanently left my healers on the heal action, they'll just keep healing every single round through the combat, no matter how long it takes. Because I thought there was a limit. No limit. All right. I'll be doing that more often then. <clears throat> so yeah, that was it. Just the, uh, the, the in-combat healing, the searching, and uh, then a couple of typos that I'll just send you pictures of in uh, Discord. 
Do, do, do. Actually, I could just do that now while I'm thinking about it. They're all set to go. Oops. Blink. There you go. We have the Tophy Hall. It's supposed to be Trophy Hall. And the Chamber of Sorcery in the middle has uh, uh, yeah, a bunch of nonsense in the sentence structure. Lax, wax lies melted in once was candle holders. That line there is missing a word or two. <laughs> but they're in Discord. All right, turn order. I don't see anything. Oh, we're up to 81 food. Time to sell food again. I forgot to sell food last turn, apparently. And buy my resources. You guys let me advance the turn without doing important stuff. I blame you completely. All right. Nothing else interesting on that list. How are we looking over here? So he has pushed back. I can continue to push forward. And I am going to do that. Actually, let's make sure they're still at war. Diplomacy, Cartier, still at war with Aminon. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to keep pushing. We're going to try to get to the town or the little village here. So, are out in the open. Wait, 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 wait. Maybe I'll wait for my cavalry to get here. We keep pushing. Uh, man, even the, even the cavalry can't do much movement. Hmm. I'm going to keep pushing. Did my values just change? <laughs> it sure looked like my own unit. Something changed when I moved. Did something change? I mean, I know it revealed him, but it sure felt like my own unit just dropped. I, I, I'd have to go back and look <laughs> 10 seconds ago, but... That, that's it. that looked weird the way that worked. Huh. All right. Well, whatever. Uh, we'll leave that alone for the moment. Let's go sell stuff before I forget. Too much food. I'm giving it away. I'm giving it away, I tell you. Uh, what are we at? 600 again. But, oof, ouch. Ouch. 280. It's 28 per. Yeesh. Okay, uh, that's done. Districts, I'm still kind of holding off on. We're running out of slots in Marabilis. I've got slots in these other spots, but uh, we're at 77 horses. I was hoping to get that armored cav going. Um, armored knights, I mean. So we're only short on the horses now. Or, I mean, we're or short on the iron, not the horse. We're at 62, and we need 63. Bye. <laughs> we meet the requirement. Build me some armored knights. All right. Armored knights on the way. Four turns. Does the time to be ready vary? One turn, two turns. Okay, it varies. These high-end units are the worst. All right, uh, I think that's all the resources I'm going to commit. We're at zero iron again. We zeroed out, near zeroed out our horses. We do have raw materials for buildings. Um, hmm. Let's look at... Still short on stone, huh? Five more stone. I could afford five more stone. Increased ability of a local population up to a total of 20%. Stability is very important. We're recovering from the stability we lost when we declared war. Uh, but I think I'd like either a guild or a library first. 
Maximum Heroes plus one or a higher cap on total alchemists with a higher chance of recruitment. All right, let's go get five stone. Ooh, I ran out of money. Never mind. All right, we're going to wait. We got to recover our cash flow. <clears throat> it was thirty seven six. Oh, uh, that's the movement cost or the movement points. So the, the second number changing isn't a mystery. <laughs> I, I thought the first number changed our combat power. That's what freaked me out. So I just saw something change and then this got flipped so we could see it because we're adjacent. So, but yeah, that's our movement points. So of course that dropped as we moved. Okay. Uh, mystery solved. Let's do uh, adventuring stuff. So we got to, we can go back into our dungeon. Uh, let's do these first though. So we know that's a medium. You need to go investigate these three. False, and it is in a dungeon. It is a hard dungeon. Out we go. All right, so he'll check that last one next. I got one guy up here. Uh, there. Uh, so now we have two locations down there. Um, you're done. Yeah, I think. I have yet to see a uh, adventure location just sitting in the middle of a field. <laughs> so it seems to be regions, dungeon exploration regions seem to be focused in rough terrain areas. Every single one I've ever seen has been in this big stretch of woods or now down here. I've never seen one out in the open. I'm not sure. Maybe I saw one in hills. I can't remember. But absolutely, I've never seen one out in the open. All right, so I think we've saturated kind of the available stuff up here. Uh, this one can have five, and it now has five. So until we get a f get rid of a few, we won't get any more here. All right, let's go. Uh, let's see, go on our adventure. I think I don't have anything for these other adventurers to do right now. I don't think there's any downside to. Like if one of them had a trait that was good for governing, I don't think there's a downside to me assigning them to be a governor temporarily. But without some kind of a trait, I don't think there's a particular reason to do it. Uh, so Varen. Sorcerer, conserver, Aegis. Yeah, so no particular trait. I don't know that he would apply any kind of a, an enhancement or a bonus there. All right, let's go in our dungeon. Back in the dungeon. Okay, so we got our heals after combat again. 15 enemies remaining. We're going south. Wide hall, another chamber of sorcery. Irrigation. Bear trap. Hey, Geary. Wait, nobody took damage? Oh, we lost. Uh, did it take some of my heals after combat? <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what happened there. I saw the bear trap message, but I didn't see anybody's hit points drop. And I was about to start yelling at Geary, our adventurer, for not seeing slash disabling it. But I didn't read the full text before it faded out. And I don't know of a way to get that to come back up again. So I guess we'll continue on. It did drop, but the healer healed him. All right. So I am going to yell at Geary. The whole reason I put you in this group, Geary, <laughs> is to prevent traps. Uh, I have yet to... I mean, that's the first trap we've had since having an adventurer in the party, so I don't know uh, how often we're going to get uh, that happening. All right, Madcap Dream Eater, Le Sertillian Stalker. So we've seen that group before. Not too worried about it. The Dream Eater's pretty tough, and the Madcap has spells. 
Let's do the traditional taunt with the heavy warrior defense and uh, bash. And uh, I think I will go sorcerer. And let's try. Let's try to go defensive on the first round. We'll try a bash on a spell bind to lock down somebody. We'll let the rest do their thing. All right, we got the spell bind on the uh, on the battle iguana. No damage incoming. Oh, yeah, these Lacertillian stalkers are battle iguanas. <laughs> Giant mutated iguana trained to act as a hunting dog. Or the lizard man. So there's themes to the enemies that you fight in each dungeon, typically. Um, all sorts of different themes, so variety is cool. There's it could be undead, it could be mutated forest creatures, it could be lizard guys. Uh, there's a lot of different groups that you might be facing. I don't know if those groups are spread out among the difficulty levels or if they're only going to hit certain types and certain difficulties or how that part works, but we'll find out as we play more. Um, let's go ahead and uh, let's take the sorcerer, go back to magic attack. Otherwise, keep the rest the same. So we got our bash in on the iguana. Everybody's still in good shape. Iguana down, no damage. A little bit of golden shards. Ah, we got spellbound again. I think we'll finish him this round, though. Yeah. Out he goes. Couple more gold. Twelve to go. So at least we might get like five in a group. So it's at least three groups, probably four groups left, I would guess. I really, I really do want to finish the run without having to go back out again if we can manage it. All right, more madcaps. A great room. So I'm going to do one of our search actions in here, I think. All right, uh, are we changing anything? We're still on uh, block. I think that's still a good call just to leave him permanently on block, pretty much. It's done to start, and we got two of the magic users this time. I think I'll switch to counter spell. Try to prevent the magic users from locking my guys down, and we'll let everybody else do their thing. We took a hit and uh, didn't accomplish much otherwise. All right, uh, Druid, switching you to heal. Not good. Counter spell did not save my my warrior. Hmm. <laughs> he got hit again? Okay. At least we got rid of one of the targets. Got our own bash in. And switch to full press. Everybody's going on offense. I'm going to leave him on taunt. Try to get them to go after him still. Everybody else will go full press. He took another hit. That's fine, though, because now for, to finish it up, we can have the druid heal him back up to full, and we won't use my heals after combat. Okay. We're going to search. We got two gold. And continuing to move, nine enemies left. Probably three fights of three. Uh-oh. Madcap Lord. Hey there, Madcap Lord. Let's 
So, magic melee, eight and nine. Five resist. He's, he looks kind of like an all-rounder. He's giving armor bonus to his side and lowering resist and immunity. Yeah, I noticed the uh, the combat healing, or the heals after combat went down as well. So it's a total healing count. So it decrements whether you're healing in combat or out of combat. Either wind scale. Um, we might still make it out of here in this this run. Uh, maybe <laughs> three more fights. Uh, maybe. Let's see how we're we gonna do this. I'm gonna continue the plan. I still think it's a good thing to have him doing his defense thing. I think he might be taking hits from uh, the mages that are getting through his armor and protection. It's hard to tell for sure, but with the speed that things go at and without a button to click to kind of see a battle results or a, a kind of a turn summary um, of what happened, who attacked who, and who inflicted damage and all that with just a couple of seconds to watch the little flashy, flashy stuff. Let's do... Let's see, get off of auto heal. I'm going to go back to counter spell there and then go for the rest of it. Ouch. Oh, so is this not um, number of healing attempts? Is this actual health? Is this a total count of the healing that can be applied to the party as a hit point? Uh, so per hit point? I always thought that was a number of times you could do a heal action. But if it's not that, if it's one health per, then that's totally different. Three points on the Lord. <laughs> He's got spells as well. Down to six on the heels. Dead end. Disturbed crypt. Found nothing. Alright, we gotta go chase down whatever we have not been to. What have we not been to? Oh, there's the... Sp hey! Spot of the trap! Geary. Good job, Geary. So, Geary actually kept us from taking damage. Nice. <laughs> I cast fireball. No, you do not. <laughs> Should be I cast tilt o weight. The if all three of you get that reference. Okay, so two mag caps and a beast. Nothing we haven't fought before. Two magic user guys. Let's go back to counter spelling to try to prevent him from locking me down. Continue your taunting behavior, and everybody else just attack like mad. Sounds like fun. No damage. Oh, yeah, we did take damage. Keep fighting. Whoa! Big hit. Ouch. Ouch. That's not cool. Hey, Druid. You are needed. 
I really don't want to lose Yanthus. That would suck. Let's uh, take him off of Taunt. We'll go... Uh, let's, let's evade with him for the round. Try to keep him alive. We'll have uh, Vimal take the uh, take the taunt. And uh, everybody else. And let's go attack mode. These guys are being a bit of a pain in the ass. might not make it out of here without having to go back out again, which is going to suck. Go into slay mode. So what does this do when it's wizards? <laughs> I mean, you're saying attempt to target the most injured spawn, but how do they do it? I mean, a sorcerer goes after the weakest using what versus a warrior going after the weakest. Does it, is it a separate kind of thing or does it pick whatever they're better at or what, what does it do? I, I understand the targeting, but I don't know what the actual combat is going to be. It picks the best option for the hero. All right, that'll work. I mean, there's only one target. I don't see why there, there's not really a point to this. Is there any benefit other than it points them at a specific enemy? They don't get any kind of a combat advantage. So if there's only one enemy, am I losing the plus two to hit? If I pick this? It seems like I would lose my pluses to hit, but I don't know if that's actually the case. Or is this just a targeting thing, and then it's still going to do this, and I'm still going to get my plus two to hit? I'm assuming that's the way it's working. It just picks whichever. And this just gives me the benefit of targeting the weakest member. You lose the plus two hit? Well, I don't like it then. <laughs> well, in this case, I don't like it. So we're going to go back off of <laughs> the sleigh, because that's, that's bad. So... Let's remove those options. No, I get the intent. I just wanted to make sure because the interface was not making it apparent what was going to happen there. So I wanted to, uh, to clarify before I did the action, but I understand the reasoning behind it. I just think there needs to be some kind of a clarification, whether it's in the rules section or I'm not sure if you can do it in the interface section, but the two questions I had were really, I, the, the description tells you that it's going to go after the most injured. That's good, but it doesn't tell you you're going to lose this. So in this situation, it's a terrible idea to pick this. You're losing all sorts of bonuses. Um, so yeah, whichever. Get quick fight and finish this up. All right, so we're full strength and we're heading into a fight. I, I'm i a little nervous. We only got three guys left, so we only have one more encounter. Um, We've been everywhere. Does that mean there's a secret door we're missing? Because <laughs> uh, there's no obvious pathways to take. Oh, never mind. We weren't everywhere. We had one side passage I missed. Decorative Hall. All right. Oh, another Lord. Youch. This could be bad. Let's see. Hmm. What to do here? I think I'm going to go... Max lockdown on the first one.
Yeah, let's let's go max lockdown attempts in the first round, and we'll kind of see how things sort out. I'm kind of worried about this Lord with me having zero heals. No damage came in. We spellbound and hit him. Now we got him locked down. One damage. Looking good so far. Uh, once we get it down to just the Lord, things will ease up quite a bit. Let's switch you back to block. You to... Eh, I don't really care who which they go after. And you back to magic. Looking good. Uh, I think I'm just going to keep it the way it is. Alright, we got this. Okay, damage facet of a wall, coffered of old secrets. Treasure collected, gold plus three. And we'll search the final room. Nothing to be found. All right, we have achieved victory in the dungeon. Uh, nothing left for us to do but hit the leave button. No magic item that time. Alt is empty. All right, we got another low right next to us. So next turn, we'll just step right into that. Uh, the other guys, you're done moving. I'm not generating again until we clean some stuff up. Uh, I'm just going to leave him out here because that's where more stuff's going to appear anyway. I think we're done. Um, 61 food is fine. I'm going to take a turn to recover some cash before I buy anything else or build anything else. Research, no new alchemists. We're up to 13 out of 30. Conviction magic has made a surge up to 12. All right, uh, so nothing new there. I don't think we got any offers. Things have kind of sorted themselves out into the good guy, bad guy camps at this point. Yeah, I think we're done. All right, process. <laughs> this place. Uh, I don't know how they survive. They must have quite the units in that stack. All right. Uh, wow, 86 food. Oh, we're back into spring. Oh, so much food. <laughs> so much food. Time to start uh, selling bushel loads of it. Frontier report of four. Oh, what? Forged enough to survive the most. 66.32. I'm, I'm forward of my supplies, am I? I'll have to go look at that. Uh, no research, no improvements. Our stance is fading diplomatically. We did get a trade offer. And uh, not much else going on. All right, so trade offer first. Get that out of the way. Hey there, Warwick. You are uh, amiable and futile, huh? And you're stronger than us? Really? Where are you, Warwick? Oh, that big guy. Oh, that's right. I remember that's the first choice you get when you do this scenario. This is the one that's selected. The Old Majesty Kingdom. Heck yeah. I want to trade with you. I'll get good money off of that. You guys fighting? You guys are fighting. Going after Fewer House, are you? War with Fewer House. Lots of trade agreements. All right. Heck yeah, we'll take that deal. I'm not sure why. I think I picked them to send a trade deal to originally, and I don't think it went through for whatever reason, but whatever. All right, diplomacy's done. Let's go take a look around. So, back to what I care about. Yeah, we're uh, we're out of our, our supply line. So, uh, supply. Yep, we're one space out of our supply line right now. We were forged enough uh, resources. He took Baron Keep. <laughs> now he took Baron Keep? Look at this stack he's got now. Oh, crap. Uh, great. 
Well, that's really annoying. Yeah, I don't know when this fight's ever going to be over. Uh, <laughs> Well, with that roaming around, I need to get my units joined up. Still raining like crazy. It's been um, months of storms. Uh oh. Now I'm nervous about not having all my units. I think I'm going to bring my two units. I can only get to there. Oh, that's right. Turn uh, turn supply off. Confusing me because of the, the color differences. <laughs> Whether it's supply or movement space, they're both green, just different shades. Turn that off. I can only get to there. huh? So I can get my group combined. These guys are going to get just slaughtered if that guy moves out of there. I originally smited this cavalry unit, but he's had plenty of time to retreat and get it back into shape. And I do not want to go into that thing with a fortification there. I'm really annoyed that he now goes on and takes that. I'm going to have to hope he pulls that unit out of there, I think. So let's, uh, let's meet up right here. I'm going to leave my two militia. I don't know how much of a deterrence that's going to be. I really just need to watch the AI do stuff in a situation like this so I can get a feel for how it makes its decisions and what I need to watch out for. I don't know what this guy's doing. <laughs> Cardiar's got no, no units. Uh, I might have to send a unit over here just to see what he's got in this stack. I don't know how big his defensive unit is. This is his capital. So... I wonder when uh, Aminon is going to decide that enough is enough and uh, stop the war or actually go attack the capital. I mean, just dancing around out here isn't really accomplishing much that I can see. Hex control. I can't see hex control. There we go. Hex control. Not hexes themselves. Um... All right, now I am a little confused. Why is why is this orange? I control the area. Why is it not blue like this one? No, I didn't just take it. I've had my, my militia sitting here for a couple of turns. We took it like three turns ago, and then I moved units off to go adventuring for a couple of turns. So we've we've owned that for, I don't know, not quite a while. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we originally took that when I had all of my army in one spot. Then I divided my army up. I left a unit here, and I left a unit here. I came down here. Then we've come back again since then to get my cavalry into the group. So it's been multiple turns. I've had that for at least four or five turns. Ah, uh, maybe not that many. It's been at least three. But I'm not sure why the control and why is it orange anyway? Why is it this guy's color? Are are we at war with him too? Uh, I'm not at war with him. Diplomacy. Hey you. You are at war with Fuhr House and nobody else. So yeah, why is it his color? Or I guess his color. It could be the same. The color, the, the weather is changing things a bit. Turn off the weather. I guess that could be his color, more likely. He's not involved up here. The colors are just so close, it's hard to distinguish. Uh, Hex control? Uh, I just toggled on hex control, yes. Just to check. Who had what? I don't remember if I had toggled it on earlier.
Gee, good thing I have the save games location shortcutted. Uh, roll. Do do. All right, save files in the Discord. Okay, let's uh, let's move on. So we're out of movement points. We just got the cavalry unit into the army. Um, I'm tempted to send this this swordsman over. We've got space for one more unit. I dropped two militia out to uh, try to garrison these places and dissuade the AI from trying to go after them. I got no other units anywhere close. Ugh, it's raining in this area. I turned the weather off, but it's raining and slowing me down. Oops, not events, weather. Yeah, so this guy's going to have a terrible time getting over there. Let's just see what happens. Let's not uh, remove all of my defenses in my northern part of my realm. All right, so I'm done up here. That's all the investigating we can do. Let's turn uh, X control back off again. And uh, not doing anything up there. So these guys are ready to go on the next adventure. So we got uh, Geary up to level two. And Darwin. They were both level one when we went into that adventure. So let's pop over here. Hey, I like that number. All right, we're going to auto-explore this one. <laughs> So it's 0% per adventurer, meaning 0 times 6 equals 0%, right? <laughs> if I get somebody dying, we're going to talk about that XCOM math again. So two turns, I think that's more than adequate. Uh, well, 13 enemies. This is a pretty small one. Hmm. I don't know if I want to sit out for 13 enemies. That's four fights probably. Uh, I think this one I'm going to actually do manually. My normal inclination would be, hey, I have no chance of dying. Let's just auto-explore it and go on about our business. But that locks my characters down for two turns afterwards. And I think I might be able to push through this on my own in one turn, just finish out this turn, and then have them available next turn. So, yeah, let's let's say no to this. Let's do it manually. Uh, now I'm going to find out what's in here. There's only 13, but it's 13 dragons. <laughs> Not that extreme, of course, but it's going to be 13 tough things versus 26 not tough things like we had in the, the last one. And my, my, my scale is going to go out of whack. All right. Uh, north we go, I guess. The Wyvern Watchtower. Collection Hall. Library. Brambles! Geary spotted it. So, no bramble damage for us. Good job, Geary. And a dead end in a corrupt vault. Alright, let's use a search. Uh, no message? No nothing? Huh. Thought usually we got a pop up. It did use the search. Alright. Wet tunnels. Uh-oh. A primal witch and a fetid unguis. Fetid unguis. Undescribable green fleshy mass with four clawed legs, several eyes around its body, and uh, we have another typo. The word various has an O in it. Various appendages protruding from its body. It is terrible. Ho it is a terrible horror to witness. Uh, I don't know if you're concerned about capitalization, but, you know... Zero and various, capital I, and it is a terrible horror to witness. This creature is quick despite its stunted appearance and excretes a foul odor before attacking, rendering its intended target gagging. Ugh, that is a really weird sentence. Wow, how many commons do we have in this thing and it just keeps going? This creature is quick despite it. It's, it should be a period there. And then despite its stunted appearance... Ah, this, this is all messed up. <laughs> this this whole paragraph is just messed up. This creature is quick despite its sudden appearance and excretes a foul odor before attacking, rendering its intended target gagging before it jumps on them and starts ripping through their body. Woof, that is quite the sentence. 
In some reports, the victim fell into a melancholy state before being assaulted. Where this creature came from is unknown. All right. Um, so that's kind of scary. Immune, 60% magic reduction and 10% surprise bonus. Okay. And then the Primal Witch. These do sound more dangerous, so I think it's less enemies, but stronger. So, lower resist, Warlock weakens toughness and impenetrable. All right. 16 magic rating. Yeah, we're definitely fighting tougher enemies in a lower quantity, so my... My estimate is probably skewed. Savage and angry, the witches are sorcerer women that have been stricken with madness. In their attempt to increase their magic power, they use shard magic in a manner no wizard of high reputation would. They transform themselves. Their experiments changed them into abominations or resulted in a painful, horrific death. Ones that survived did manage to increase their power, but the cost was a life of isolation. They're usually found taking care of Mondo's children in an attempt to restore their humanity. All right. So, yeah, 16 magic rating. And then these guys are going to put some kind of, uh, some kind of uh, effect on us. All right, Sorcerer, you're going Counterspell for sure. Geary doesn't have too many options. Orion, do we double Counterspell or attempt to Spellbind? Let's do defense resist bonus times two. And I'm still going to block taunt with you. And let's do a first turn bash with you. All right, let's see how this goes. I'm a little worried. All right, we got some hits in on the witch. They did spell bind me through my counter spell. Um, let's switch you to defense or taunt. Draw attacks onto you. Adept, adept. Let's do. Let's try to spell bind this round. Although they're. Hmm. Ah, let's give it a try. Yeah, Rem Dev's in the chat. He's he's watching both, so you're over on the YouTube side, but he's he's there. Depending on which side he's currently being spammed with uh, advertisements. <laughs> okay, six four. Still no dam. A uh, little bit of damage came in. Let's switch you back to stun. Actually, no, let's let's go uh let's try to get rid of that witch. Let's slay the witch. She's a witch. Because she weighs the same as a duck. Therefore, she's made out of wood. Um, counterspell, yes. Melee. Defense. Melee. Yeah, let's go with this. Spellbound me again. Alright, witch is gone. Still doing good on hit points. Go all in. These guys had which one? They had the magic immune, so we're just going to go melee attack everybody. All red plus twos. Down he goes. Heroes were healed for four. All right, so first group gone. A troll! They have a cave troll! Oh no. And a wandering horror. Yeah, I was definitely right. <laughs> Lower spawn count, higher difficulty. 
Good to know. I don't think we're going to make it through in one turn like I was hoping. Unless we get pretty lucky. An abomination. Um... Looks like the text there looks fine. Uh, so what do we got? Block and magic resist. And a decent melee attack, but eh, I'm not too scared of him with what I can see of his stats and abilities. Wandering horror. Um, melee eight. Magic resist again, so we're going high melee. And then the troll, 14 melee. <laughs> Favorite way to kill a person is squeezing them to death. All right. So, yeah. Um, dangerous. We're definitely going back on block duty and taunt. And I think I'm going to leave everybody else on uh, melee attacks. They got magic resist. So let's actually... I think you're better off trying to spellbind one. Even with their resistances. So is resist... Is that going to affect the chance to spellbind? Or is that just a resistance against magic damage? How is that... How does that count? Does this count against a spellbind attempt, or is it only against magic damage reduction? So it is just going against magic damage. It does not uh, give them increased block chance against a... Uh, Spellbind attempt. Thirty percent to shrug off magic damage applied to them, huh? It can resist spellbind. All right. Um. Well, let's not do the spellbind then. Let's just go. Um, Melee damage for everybody, and we'll see how the round goes. And <sighs> we start with taking a hit. Whoop that troll! Okay, that was not a great round. Troll's gone. Doing okay. Um, I think I'm just going to keep it the way it is. Boring hits. Come on, finish them off. Cool. No better than I expected that to go. A Lang Jot and a Pumpus. <laughs> Friend? Hey there, Lang Jot. First spotted in the Crowning Mountains, these creatures are long, hairless, and thick skinned. Their eyes have adapted to the dark and are mostly ice blue. They secrete a terrible smell and attack by pummeling their victims. They make low groaning sounds when attacking, much like a horn. This is to call others onto the attack. Where they come from is unknown, but they are spreading throughout the land. <laughs> Is that flavor text, or are they actually going to add enemies to the fight? <laughs> uh, I'm going to assume that's flavor text. I haven't seen a mechanic that would like do something where it adds enemies to the fight, but that'd be a fun surprise to have happen. <laughs> Don't take the fevered, uh, evil imaginings of a crazy live streamer as, uh, you know, <laughs> ideas to put in the game. I'm just curious when the flavor text of locations or enemies actually have a game impact. <laughs> That'd be kind of funny, though, if you had a creature that uh, had some kind of a summoning option. That would really put a pressure on getting rid of that creature pretty quickly. 
could even be a horde type creature like rats with other rats continuously adding into the fight or something. I don't know. There's a lot of different possibilities. Um, let's kill some things though. So they don't look terribly, terribly uh, dangerous. The pompous, a humanoid mutation of what seems to be a previous human. Violet skin indicates shard magic is involved. Unpredictable and moody, going from being curious to attack in a matter of seconds. These creatures can leap a good distance and have considerable strength. They live in packs and have a social order. How they came about is unknown, except magic was certainly involved. So a little higher on the uh, the melee and the health ratings. Armor and weapons aren't too impressive. Uh, yeah, these guys don't scare me too much. We'll do our standard block. Um, I don't think I'm going to even go bash. Let's, let's just hammer them down. A little bit on the Langjot. I'm wondering if it would be... I sometimes lose track of who I've hit and what their starting hit points were. I guess I can check... Actually, uh, yeah, health three. Oh, so yeah, I haven't hit it all yet. I was just wondering if it would be better to have the, the current slash uh, max hit points just like we have here for the characters. Um, with some of the bigger guys, I sometimes lose track and have to go check if I've actually scored a hit. If they're lower, I mean, I would know from, I guess, the slay command, but whatever. We got a lot of space here. I don't know how much of that is because of the... Uh, eh, we're we're going to have a lot of space no matter what from the input, but... You know. All right, let's keep fighting. So we got rid of one, and we did take a hit. So we're gonna lose two more points, and we got at least at least two more fights to go. All right, pompous. We took another hit. Uh, six. I'm a little worried. I gotta I gotta kick the druid over to a heal. Okay, so we still got 10. I think we're, we might make it still. We got two more fights. Uh, crossfire! Well, now we have less heals. <laughs> so now we're down to nine. Geary didn't do Geary's one job. You got one task, Geary. Only one thing I expect from you. <laughs> what is Gary taking a break? What the hell? <laughs> two traps in a row, you failed? Now I got five heals left with two fights to go. <laughs> oh, maybe three fights if it's two each. We're outnumbered. Another Pompous and Langjot. Alright. Uh... Uh, these guys don't have... They've got the surprise and the block. Uh, let, let's switch some of our guys back to magic damage. Uh, you two. Back to magic damage. And I am going to put you on that. Took two hits. No! Oh. Three hit points left. Still got probably two fights of two, I would gather. I hope it's not four. Oh, it's four. Ouch. And we got new stuff. Ah, this might be, this might be icky. A devourer. Whirling mass of green flesh and tentacles. This horrific abnormality is usually dormant until some prey approaches. All right. Um... Hmm. Fourteen melee on that bad boy with ten strength. An animal horror. He's not too impressive. Thickly imp, also not too impressive. And the unhallowed. So it's just the devourer that's the dangerous one. The rest of these aren't uh, aren't much. So we need to chew through them and then get rid of this devourer. So we're probably, the problem's going to be if that Devourer actually lands the blow on my guy doing uh, block 
taunt. This could get a little ugly. I'll have to swap them, but I need to get rid of these three as quick as possible. I didn't see anything about any particular resist to worry about. These three don't have any... Well, he's got the block, but... Even he has just got high stats with no specialty stuff, so... I think we'll be okay unless we get some pretty unlucky rolls. So, let's stick with what we got. We'll, uh, we'll block taunt. We'll try to bash. Maybe I'll go... Uh, let's do spellbind. If they don't have particular resistances to magic... Maybe we can lock, get lucky and lock down the Devourer. Yeah, let's go with that. So we did take a bit of a hit. We got uh, three hit points of healing left. Almost got rid of him. We did not spellbind the right critter, though. I think I'm going to leave it just the way I've got it. One more hit to this guy, and we'll use the heal. The last of the heals. Then I might have to put him on defense and put him on block. Okay, so we got rid of one. We spellbound one. Imp's almost gone. We got the devourer down one point. Okay. Um, Druid, go ahead and do your heal. And we got more damage on the big guy. Ouch! Now we're in dangerous crit hit death territory again. <laughs> Alright, let's put you on bash, you on taunt. No heals left. Um... Not getting many spell binds. Let's just go straight to magic. And there we go. We must have got some pretty big hits. All right. So we gained levels. We got some gold. No, uh, no message about any magic items again, though. So uh, let's search. Nothing to be found. I don't know if it's worth backing up and searching for the last time. I guess we'll we'll go into the uneasy tunnel. That doesn't sound like a room. Trophy hall. Sure. And it made a message. It made a noise, but I get no no messaging. I, I don't know. Maybe the noise means nothing found. Usually, I get a message. I'm not sure what the disparity there is between getting a pop-up message or not getting a pop-up message when I'm searching. Or if something's actually happening and it's just not telling me. <laughs> I don't know. All right, we're out of here. So another low one done. Uh, let's go check our heroes and vaults. Yeah, still nothing in our vault, so we didn't get any, any other loot. We're picking up gold. We're picking up crystals, the shards, which is important. We have things we need to build that are going to require shards, and this is the way to get shards, so... All right, uh, all of that is done. Now that we've cleared a few out, let's go ahead and do uh, some searching. No positive results. No positive results. Okay. What do we got? We got an extreme again. I don't want an extreme. So we got one more to check next turn. Um, what do we got? We got five down here now. We got four. None of which I can do right now. Maybe we could inch our way into the medium, but two extremes and a hard. So if this turns out to be a dungeon, we're, we're done. We can't generate any more down here until we clear something out. It's my understanding of how it works. Well, if it's a UI scale issue, why do I see the message sometimes and not others? That, that would be a little weird to me. I mean, I would expect if the UI scale was interfering, it would always interfere or never interfere, but having it be variable seems odd. Unless the message positioning changes depending on success or fail. But I definitely, well, I mean, I, I guess I could have found gold or something, but yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure what's triggering that. 
All right, uh, we're done with military. I think we're done with uh, heroes. Let's go look around. We've got three more turns on our knights. The heroes are going to be ready for next turn. Cleric, warrior, and warrior again. i got to remember to check that every round. Uh, are we maxed out? We're at 11 out of 12, so I can still hire one more. Um, we had a siege battle? 63, 34. Oh, that's an old one. Never mind. That's winter of 524. That just hasn't rolled off the list yet. Never mind. We have achieved nothing so far. Uh, I'm not sure. I've got quite a few peace offers, but I'm not going to go count them to see how close we are to 15. I could go. We got diplomatic actions. I could go try to find more people to uh, to do it with. No wars for the first half of the game. Well, we've lost that one. <laughs> no isolation as points for us. I think we own two magic items total. No artifacts. You only get those in the extreme dungeons. Ah, uh, definitely haven't gotten to those, so and nowhere near any of that. So yeah, we're we're nowhere near any of this stuff. Probably the uh, the peace alliance agreement is the closest we're to. Definitely not conquering or overlording. Our unit list. Should we want to go investigate somebody? We can see where they're at and what their stats and stuff are, and jump to them. Support by various factors. Still only got Jonin lost to uh, me taking a 17% chance or 18% or whatever that number was. Um, losses. Warwick has lost eight footmen. I've lost six. Yes, I guess I have lost six strength points. <laughs> How is he still in the fight? How is he still in the fight? Good Lord. Aminon, how are you managing this? Uh, if I had lost that much, I my, my, my entire country would be empty. <laughs> Damn. Huh. How is he managing to prosecute that fight and hold both of us off pretty well <laughs> with those kinds of losses? Hmm. Where's Cardyar on this list? Carjar, Carjar's lost 30. Forces and victory points. So, you know, we are right there at 144 uh, sort by victory points. Look at that. We're second from the top. I think I don't know what we started at. I didn't actually check this early, so I, I don't know if um our activities has raised us up or if we just started near the top because of the country we picked. How about wealth? Uh, we're at fifth in wealth. Population, fourth. Land, a little further down. All right. Uh, food. That's right. We got to sell food. Lots of food needs to be sold. And we're buying. We're still stockpiling wood at 25 a turn. We built some things, so it's gone down a bit, but let's go ahead and sell some of that too. Um, I'm not in a hurry to get more horses. I'm happy with the ones we've got. Let's buy one stone at 324. And, uh, I'm going to hold off on it. All right. How about districts? We've got raw materials. I've got two slots. I held off on building something. Hmm. 
Let's go. Let's go live. All right, economy's done, district's done, research, no change, we're up to 15, we made it halfway. Um, no new diplomacy offers. So all the good guys are now listed at the top. Me, of course. We've got trade agreements, ally with those three. Those are my neighbors. Um, I'm maintaining my, my emissaries here to keep my, my numbers high. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or if I should move them on to other countries and work with them. Now that we've got ally and trade and so on, they probably will maintain themselves. It'd probably be good to shuffle the emissaries around a bit. Let's uh, let's pick a few other ones. So Leandor, equal and dominating. All right, let's. Uh... I think I have to remove. Uh, my emissary can't yeah, recall. Oh, so it's going to be a turn delay. All right. I'm going to recall all three of these. And Lux, I don't have the full ally. So we're at trustful. You, let's uh, offer peace. Leave him there until we get everything. All right. I think that's all the diplomacy stuff I'll worry about for now. I just want to try to get all of the good guys uh, set up on my side and get my, all my alliances and everything bonused. We're at 48. Huh. 48. Is that not going up much? And where can I be? Um, how can I see, am I going to increase in stability? And if so, where can I see it? <laughs> or is it just a flat value and I have to do actions specifically to raise it? I don't know if there's a point to which it's going to move on its own or if, um, I have any way of changing that short of forming more alliances and things like that. Upper left, the statue. Uh, uh, upper left of the statue. I'm not sure what you're pointing out. You know the stability there. That takes me to my capital. Oh, I know what my number is. I, I see that. But it doesn't show like... What I'm wondering is, is it like a resource here where I get plus, plus one per round due to something? Or if it's just a flat static value and it's only going to change when I either declare war or so on. How do I get it back up is my question. So let's say I go to war, which I did with him, and it dropped. How do I get it to go back up again? It gravitates to 50? All right. So it has a 50 point. All right. <clears throat> So you just have to wait it out. Is there any way to improve the speed with which it does that through buildings or any other actions? I know if I go set up a bunch more alliances and trades and so on, I'll get incremental bumps, but I wasn't sure if there was any other way to do it. Temples. So district, temple. Um, stability of local population up to 20%. So I don't really know what that means. I mean, I understand the words, but for example, Marabilis, what, what does a 20% stability increase per population mean in regards to Marabilis that has a population of 10? Uh, well, what, what is the math involved here? And I think, I don't remember if I read something about this. Yeah, stability levels. I guess I could come in here, stability variables, stability levels. 
Uh, agreements, events, wars, battles, lack of food, temples increase, overall bonus of 20%, uh, larger kingdoms require more temples, moves towards 50, uh, percent of the current value. All right. You know, keep people fed. It's going to gravitate towards 50. I get that part. Low stability is bad. You lose production. Whoa, 81 to 100. More recruits. All right. And then stability below 50 decreases production. Action is a changed ability. <laughs> all right. Pretty much all my questions are being answered here, so don't worry about my meanderings. I hadn't come and checked this tab for info in a while. So looks like all the information I need is actually load listed here. Accepting alliances, truce, peace, we'll bump it. And then doing the bad things will make it go down. Okay, I get the idea. Cool. <clears throat> Temples in all locations? Whew, you wish. <laughs> These things are expensive. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a lot of stone. I mean, when you're gaining, gee, what am I gaining? Nine per turn? <laughs> so five turns per if I just focus only on building temples and I have how many locations? Uh, summaries, locations, uh, that many? <laughs> sure, yeah, I'll get temples in all of those at some point. At least the high population centers, Mirabilis and Watch Bay and uh, yeah, no, we'll see. I think those are my two biggest, 10 and 4. All the other ones are little tiny hamlets. Okay. Um, where are we at in my turn sequencing? I think I was done with everything. Cleric Warrior Warrior, we checked that. I uh, got three turns on my knights, and we're just kind of waiting over here after joining up my... All right, let's hit end turn. Oh, they finally lost. Took them long enough. I think that fight kicked off on like turn three. <laughs> Tiny kingdom held out a long time. Okay. Uh, wacky amounts of food being produced. I got to sell more food. Only five rotted that turn, but yeah, I got to keep selling food. We make way too much food in our kingdom. Nothing new, nothing there. Rejected our generous offer. Lux, what are you doing to me, buddy? Oh, look at that. Warwick, seven for each of us. All right, what's the news? He moved out of Baron Keep, so that seems like a really bad idea for the AI to do that. Because I am now going to go, oh man, I can't get there? <laughs> Is it raining still? Is this like the third year of rain in this place? Uh, weather, yep. <laughs> Does it ever not rain? It feels weird with the time frames going by. <laughs> so much rain. Huh, and I can't get into the damn keep. Well, I'm going for it regardless. I want in. If we can just hold the rest of this, and then I can position a defensive force in the keep, and then sally forth and keep trying to pick things apart and try to take Jiri. Are you at war with Solemn Citadel also? Solemn Citadel? Dude, how, how, how bad are you being? 
How does he have units in Solom Citadel if he's not at war with them? Isn't that a no-no? It lists me, at least Cardier, and at least lists Mars House, which is where the hell's Mars House? Uh, Mars House. Where where are you? You're way over there. Huh. Oh, that is Mars House. Never mind. Uh, I thought that was the city name. My bad. Don't mind me. <laughs> the zoom level confused me, and I don't have all the names memorized, so that is Mars House. All's good. I was trying to figure out why he had a unit in here. I thought that was the country name, but no, that's that's Mars House. Uh, good luck. You're not taking that away from him. Not with a five fortification. Um, yeah, it feels like there's a lot of nations putting pressure on Ammonon, and he is just still taking the fight to everybody. All right, so we moved our units. Unfortunately, that is still part of Ammonon at the moment, so we couldn't quite get to it. Can't get to it with any of my units. That bums me out. Uh, I did not decide to bring unit over. My horses are not ready. And uh, we got ooh, a sorcerer and an enchanter. Yeah, I've seen very I, I've seen I think only two of the heroes out of all the ones I've seen so far have had any kind of bonus for governance. Seems fairly rare to get somebody with a governance bonus bonus. Do heroes as they level up ever gain additional traits like these things? Is it possible as a hero levels up that they'll gain some kind of a governance bonus, or is it always going to be right up front? They do not? All right. Yeah, my lack of uh, units and having keeping my stack together because I'm worried about that big cavalry stack he's got. Severely hampering me. I need to get that heavy cav over here. That would help out, I think, tremendously. <clears throat> yeah, I know it's expensive, which is why it's boggling me that Ammonon is still fighting <laughs> after all those losses they've taken. What's their what's their goal? Um, they never I've never seen them send any units to the capital. They've taken and lost, taken and lost these various things. So what what is going to get them to eventually say, all right, enough's enough? I haven't played long enough in a game yet to kind of see what the AI does, but is this like eternal warfare until they win? Do they ever actually say at some point, "Oh, okay, we've we're 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 we're, we're done. <laughs> Let's just make peace and keep what we've got," or is it always a war to the to the to the extermination of the other nation? Let's see. Let's get you moving. Oof! <laughs> so many extremes. I contend that your math is not correct. My in-game examples say that the math you told me about for these things just isn't working. I mean, extreme, extreme, extreme hard. <laughs> extreme, extreme, extreme hard. Medium, medium, medium. I've had one total low out of this whole area at any point. Then I had one low here, and we've had one low here, and we're about to do a, we're doing the second one now. But, ah, jeez. Uh, the random is kicking my ass still on these, these choices here. I mean, we're getting high enough where I could probably start tipping into the mediums, but it just seems really weird to have all of these huge, hugely uh, difficult dungeons popping up all the time. So, my in-game experience is, uh, is contradicting the math that I was told. To expect and it could be just random being random i i understand that but <clears throat> yeah maybe a peek at it it just feels a little weird all right um let's do what else are we doing so we're still tiptoeing through this dungeon with these guys uh let's i'm gonna finish the dungeon we'll clear it that way it might open a spot up this place is done. We've got five in this area now, and I don't think any more are allowed to spawn. So 
No activity there, and we'll wait on you. All right, let's jump into the dungeon. Oh, yeah, it's, never mind. We're done with the dungeon. That's right. We finished the lows. I got no more lows to go to right now. Everything's extreme mediums. Our queue is filled with threes and one guy, too. So Geary didn't quite make it to two. Davin made it. He was the new guy as well. They both came in together at level one, but he uh, he leveled up faster. Um, eh, Geary's big use is really finding traps. I don't know how much that's going to be affected by going into a medium. He'll be less capable otherwise after uh, with the level ups. Let's go actually look at the level up info. I haven't looked at that recently. I don't really know what happens there. I know they go up in a primary stat and then they get a chance to go up in a secondary. I remember that much. Uh oh, it's not going to list it in here. Uh, yeah, it is. Destroy monsters or governors leading cities or heroes leading armies. They gain experience. Uh, when they hit their goal, they increase their stats according to their class. Heroes gain the primary pr attribute and a random second. Second attribute chances depend on the class. So, yeah, so warrior, holy warrior, woodsman, and brute are on this line. Plus one strength and one of the following. 50% for cleverness, 33 for intelligence, and 16 conviction, and it adjusts. So that's all cool. Um, and it looks like it's just the stats go up when they get experience. No special abilities or other things. Those are all generated at the start. Um... So yeah, list of skill traits. So tactician leading an army bonus. So an army leader, um, another smaller bonus, uh, a miner. Every oh, so miners need intelligence and cleverness to get additional iron. Um, so miner, farmer, administrator, and creative. Those are the bonuses for admin. 10% chance to find extra treasure, sneak bonus, search and trap disarm bonus. So we really want an observant um, adventurer. <laughs> All right. Oh, I know. I know. It's, it's all about balance. <clears throat> I'm good with that. You don't want the dungeon stuff taking up too much time from the warfare stuff, taking up too much time from the kingdom management stuff. So let's uh, do, do, do. Hmm. what to do with the army. I guess we start tiptoeing into a medium. So let's go start tiptoeing into a medium. I don't see a reason not to give it a try at least. Auto explore? Absolutely not. <laughs> that that does not equal a good number when multiplied by six. All right. Fifty nine enemies. That's quite the jump. I think twenty three or so was the average we saw on the low, except for that last one that had. Slightly more difficult enemies, but a smaller quantity. 59's a jump, though. That worries. This is, the, this is the part that worries me, is knowing when to make the transition uh, to the next difficulty. Because we could get in a situation where the very first fight has so many enemies that we can't actually escape <laughs> if we're outmatched. So. Let's go ahead and uh, see what the first fight's going to look like, and then determine after that. Tall Corridor. Interrogation Chamber. Sacred Abbey. Wow, they're letting me get in pretty deep. Oh my god. <laughs> that's, that's what I mean. Holy crap. Low hit points. Oh, I know. I know you can try to retreat. You don't always succeed, though, and I know there's certain variables, but being outnumbered is one of the important variables, if I remember right, and I am outnumbered. That's eight guys to my six. <clears throat> so Lizard Champion stands out. Lizard Champion stands out. The rest of these look pretty small. 
and don't look too scary. So it's a lot of light guys and a couple of champions. What do you do? Uh, nothing particularly scary. All right. Uh, so the champions, though, melee eleven. They're kind of troll level, looks like something similar. No magic rating. Looks like we go magic on these guys. I don't see anything that looks like it's doing much in regards to resistance and all that. They've got the block. They've got sneak bonus. All right. Well, let's see what happens. Do we dare taunt? <laughs> I'm a little worried. Uh, I really need to eliminate at least a few as quick as possible. Hmm. Am I playing the demo? Uh, no. I don't think this is the demo. I don't know if the demo and the current build are the same thing or not. <laughs> I don't think so. I, I investigated the demo months back. I don't remember how far, but I don't believe this is the demo. This is the current build of the game. And Alvaro, who's answering you, is the uh, the developer. So if you have questions, feel free to uh, punt them his way if I don't respond quickly. All right, let's do... I think I'm just going to leave them on what they're currently on. Yeah, let's see how this first, first round goes. I'm going to let it go slow so I can keep an eye out. Almost got... Ah, oh, champions dead already. I like that. So far, just one hit, but we, we did get bashed. Probably that other champion bashed me. I'm going to guess he's the one that did it. No, he's got block. It doesn't list them having the bash ability, so how would I know that's a possibility? Would I, or should I just expect that they'll have those kinds of options without them showing their combat choices? Just warriors in general have bash. All right. So if it says fighter, warrior, whatever, I should expect that as a possibility. Good to know. All right. Let's switch you to the bash for this round. So bash and taunt. Everybody else is in good shape. Uh, I'm going to wait one more hit series. Actually, I'm a little worried. If they all hit him, he could go down. That's another question I had that I don't think I, I got an answer and I forgot to mention. While somebody is stunned, either bashed or the, the magic version, in addition to not being able to take a turn, do they get negative consequences for getting hit? Are they easier to hit while they're bashed or, or whatever? I forget the other name. Uh, bashed or spellbound? Are there other consequences beyond they lose their turn? Oops. I have run out of water bottles. No, it's a general disable account for spells and hits. Okay. All right. That's what I needed to know. But no special other secondary negative consequences. Just basically lose their turn. Let's go with uh, what we've got then. Continue the all-out assault. Try to drop one or two more. And he'll take the hits this round. Or at least the first couple. And he did take the hits. We got rid of somebody, though. Time to switch the druid over to heal. Get you back on bash duty or block duty. You back on bash duty. Um, And, uh, yeah, leave the rest. Down to four. Time to swap again. Keep the healing up. But yeah, we're definitely going to have to uh, bail out of here after just one or two fights. All right. Um, Got to keep the heal on. The heal goes off first. Get him back up to seven. We got one guy almost dead. Let's switch you to Spellbind. Let's see if we can stun one of their guys. Thank you. 
All right, we got the other big guy out, but now he's down to three. Damn it. We're going to use up all our healings in this first fight. <laughs> well, see, the key winged is you just got to submit your schedule of watching hours availability to, you know, the Vorma Corp, and then they'll review it, and then they'll ignore it. See, that's that's the process. So feel free to submit that list of hours you're you're available to watch, and uh, we'll we'll modify our, our schedule. <laughs> All right, healing again. Poor Druid. He's having it rough. Are we going to make it out of this fight with any points left? Is it going to be one fight per turn getting through this dungeon? Uh, I think I'm going to leave the rest of it alone. I haven't seen a bash succeed or a uh, spellbind succeed yet on these guys. <laughs> so now they both succeed, of course. <laughs> Naturally. All right, a couple more almost down. Everybody's full health. Go back on the offense. Or almost full health. Good enough. More gold. Still looking good. But yeah, we're definitely going to be out of healing. I can't risk another fight after this. We're going to have to leave and then come back next turn. This is going to be a long-term one. All right, yeah, down to four. But we survived, so who knows how much worse it's going to be. I don't know if that was like a big fight or if there's varying enemies more than that that we're going to encounter in this dungeon. So always fun to see that kind of stuff. 15% leave adventure. Um... Can't... It, it, wait a minute. Isn't it always possible to leave once you're out of a fight? Is this a 15% retreat bonus? Or is this actually the leave bonus? And when would you not be able to leave directly? I thought while you were in a fight, you had to do retreat, not leave. Am I wrong in that? Maybe you can do both. Retreat keeps you in the dungeon, just backs you up a space if successful, whereas leave actually pops you back out of the dungeon and has a fail chance if you try to do it while you're in combat. Maybe that's how it works. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we're definitely leaving, though, so we'll go ahead and use our search. Nothing to be found. We're out of here. Don't want to risk my party. <clears throat> we'll take it slow and steady in this medium dungeon. Hopefully we get some more level ups. Um, let's see. It does weird me out a bit that I can't see the details on the characters here from this screen. Uh, I don't think there's any way to... Go to the screen. I have to go to the heroes screen to be able to see their details. I don't know if like right clicking or something should open this screen or I don't know. It just feels a little weird that I can't actually see my character info from that screen. Then I have to come over here and go through them and they're in different locations and sort by location. So this is the start of my group here. So Davin. Uh, I'm trying to remember where is, uh, XP. So he's a long way off from level four, but he's the new guy here. He's also new trying to get up to level three. Orion is approaching level four to Mina long way and Vimmel not too far. All right. A few more fights and we might be able to get a couple of levels up, which will speed that process up. Hopefully. Okay, uh, it is time to search for more stuff. So you, nothing, and you, still nothing. We haven't seen a new one in quite a while. I think we're saturated in the two locations still. Might have to go send somebody to the far north. Let's send you up north. <clears throat> Just send the whole crew up there, I guess. We're we're done down here for doing other things. Um, who did I move? Oh crap, did I do that again? I did that again. I moved the wrong one. 
I gotta remember to move these guys back down here. I'm gonna continue doing that on accident. All right, and we didn't have the points to get into Baron Keep. Made me sad. I think we're done otherwise. So economy. Oh, time to sell food again. Uh, sell our traditional wood. Buy stone and buy iron. Off we go. Uh oh. Man, he moved back onto the keep, of course. <laughs> uh, dang it. Just not enough movement. Okay, uh, we're back to max again. 75 food produced. We're only consuming 52. I'm not selling enough. I need to sell three times. We only had three rot, so we didn't lose much, but I got to keep an eye on that during these summer months. That or I got to hire a lot more units. We got too much food. Nothing else information-wise there. Um, he stepped an army onto there, which is not going to be pleasant for us to try to go after. Hmm. What to do? Do we go here or stay in the area of the keep? I really don't think this force is... I mean, I, I, really, I haven't tried one of these kinds of fights, so I really don't know how hard this would be with that three fortification. That three fort just scares me. That lets them ignore a bunch of the damage. 7% chance per fortification level. So that's a 21% chance of any damage being reduced to zero. We have to get breach results during the fight in order to destroy the fort levels. And I think those are permanent destructions. Once they're destroyed, I won't be able to just step in and take ownership and have that. I, and plus, they're on a defensive terrain. Oh, actually, that list is grasslands. I thought that was a hill. Uh, five. I guess that counts as grasslands. All right. So yeah, I'm undecided. I don't know whether to try to prosecute that and uh, take the hit. Or if it would be better just to move down and take that and hope he pulls that unit back off of that. I think I'm going to try to force him to pull that back. I don't think he will, but... I like it. We've got three points left. Is it four needed for full strength? I think it's four needed for full strength, but I'm going to take this fight. And we killed one unit. One strength point. Um. Yeah. All right. Kind of expected that one. At least we haven't seen any push from him to try to get back up here again. But man, I really want that keep. I can just get somebody on that keep and uh, then push south with my group. I think we can... Finally, maybe, <laughs> put enough hurt on him to uh, stop the fighting. I just have no influence over him stopping the fighting against the ally I've been trying to defend. So, Still at war with Aminon. The ally bug where I'm ownership of my ally's territory? Cool. All right, moving on. Um, so that's all the fighting we're going to do. Yeah, I guess I need to concentrate. See, I don't know, again, until I play more, I don't know if having all of these armies down here in these other positions is going to be necessary. I'm not sure what the chances are that somebody's going to come and come and get me. 
either via sea invasion or or what. I mean, there's some some sea units out here that I can see. There's a pirate kingdom over here. I think there's a chance that uh, ports might get hit, so I absolutely want to make sure I keep units at ports. Hey, you guys, get back to Sentinel Keep, please. Nah, you don't have to answer that. That's one I'll find out and have uh, have fun with later. I'll definitely keep my ports guarded, which is most of my strength anyway. But uh, I might strip some of the units out of the countryside and try to get another second uh, group formed up. We'll see. Most of these guys are militia units anyway. It's just, that's probably the strongest group, that archer-swordsman combo right there. And there's one swordsman here, and we have an, a swordsman there. That's it. That's all my trained trained units other than the army I've got over there. Uh, how close are we? Next round, we got our armored knights, so that'll be good. Try to get them pushed forward through the uh, infinite rain that apparently this territory gets. Oh, we finally don't have rain. Hey, look, no rain finally. <laughs> Wondering if the rain would ever stop. All right, heroes are not done. So we've got... Uh, we got our healing back. 51 more enemies to go. Let's go this way. It's going to be all these big groups. Ah, ouch. Another double lizard champion with a festering blob. All right. Let's see. What can we do differently? We took a lot of hits last time. We just swapped back and forth between warriors doing the blocking. Got to keep that up, I think. I'm, uh, I'm still a little hesitant on the uh, the bash. And the Spellbind it just doesn't seem to land often enough, even on guys that don't seem to have resistances. Better with low hit point guys just to go for the kills early and get them out than to block. I think I'm going to go with damage this time. Let's just stay pure damage with the one blocker and we'll see how things go. One guy gone. Um, and it was the champion. Cool. That's even better. Seven out of nine. I'll risk another round before we turn the healing font on. Six out of nine. Time to switch. Otherwise, it seems to be holding up pretty well. Ooh. All I'm doing is turning this on and off each round. <laughs> That's pretty much the strategy. How many times am I going to have to turn the heal on during the round? That's the only question. All right, that went a lot better, but we are down to 12 again. Is that going to be enough to get us through the next fight? I think it will, because we'll be at full strength. Yeah, I think we'll get through at least one more fight. Bear trap for one. Geary has missed the last three traps, I think. We had two in a row, and then on that one, and we hit a dead end. What, what seems to be a dead end? Let's search it. Nothing. <laughs> He's missed four in a row, and that just used up all our healing. Oh, man. Geary, I'm getting disappointed in you, buddy. <laughs> Your usefulness to the party. I mean, I'm losing a combat slot, more more effective combat slot to somebody who's not doing the one job he's he's here to do. 
So not super excited about that. All right. Uh, what are we at? We got to sell the food again. We'll do three this time and three of that. We're buying stone, buying iron. We got one slot left in the capital. I know I, I want to save that. Let's find somewhere else to build. So I'd like to have a barracks in the south end of my realm here. Right now I only have barracks here. So for trained units, I need to get a barracks somewhere to the south. So Watch Bay is my largest at population four. That's what uh, this left hand number is four. And then if you highlight, it shows what uh, what locations you've built there or districts you've built in bleh, what uh yeah districts you've built in the city um so four three or two i mean uh, uh zero <laughs> sentinel keep has a pop of zero does it now huh no buildings no population all right. Just a defensive location. Uh, yeah, so let's, uh, what can we put in Watch Bay? We've got a market. I built the market there early. Earlier as my only other gold source. The market gives me increased gold as well as duplicating gold. Just the way the market works. Uh, market. 10% chance per gold to generate a gold. And then also food. So I put it in the place I had the most gold generation. What else can we put here? Um, do I put the barracks here? I'd like to have it kind of centrally located, maybe inland a little bit. Maybe I'll put it in Bil Bilton. They're only going to have one slot. I think you have to get to uh, three population to have the second slot. I don't have any other southern ones to do that in. Hey, Bilton. You're going to get a barracks. Watch Bay, you're going to get short on stone, quite short on stone. I don't think we can afford much else right now. I guess I could do one of the excavators, but they're not, they're bringing in three wood, two wood, zero iron, four wood. Wood is not what I want to magnify. I want to magnify stone and iron preferably, which is probably going to be up here. Why do gold mines not produce much gold? <laughs> That's the other thing that weirded me out. I remember wondering... I was trying to figure out how much gold I would get if I went over and took this gold mine from him. But then I looked at my own thing and I was like, wait, this is a gold mine, but it says it only produces one gold. How's that work? And that's when I dovetailed into the, um, a kingdom seems to have kind of a fixed value of the resources that you then modify with the buildings. That's gold through trade or mining. Hmm. I guess. This seems weird still. Three stone, three iron, and a gold. So it would be a place where we would want to put uh, an excavator. So let's go ahead and put an excavator here. Increases iron and stone production, so it's not going to increase the gold output. Hmm. All right, let's do it anyway. I think that's all we can do. Uh, research, no new acolytes. Uh, we're inching our way towards an advancement. Not worried about diplomacy. Oh, yeah, wait. Uh, I have my guys to, to spam out now. We've got three emissaries available. I wanted to look at stance on the top. Evelyn. Um, we've got these. So Leander, I don't have an alliance with. We're trustful. 
They're equal, and their land forces are dominating ours, huh? Hmm. One more action. Aladra. Uh, Rusa equal. Let's try that one. All right, we're out of diplomatic actions. I still do have my emissaries, uh, which hopefully doesn't take an action. Or it does. I have no, uh, no button to say send emissary. All right, guess I'll have to wait. Look at Yander's advantage. What's our advantage again? Oh, yeah, we have the Focus Master. Recruited clerics and druids are plus one conviction. Cool. Um, uh, still waiting on our horsies, and heroes are doing hero stuff. Yeah, that's another magic user. Uh, we're at 11 out of 12. We got our one guy doing the um, trap stuff. Who would I need to put another group together? Problem being, a new group is going to need low dungeons, and we have no low dungeons to visit to level up the new group. I do not want to send a brand new group into a medium. They'd get overwhelmed. So, yeah, I need to get those heroes up here and see if... Searching for rumors up north. I remember it gives us like that one there, so we can probably get stuff here. Maybe in here. I'm not sure where the where the where the region counts. All right, uh, I think we're all set. Turn units back on. <laughs> okay. Hey, card yard stepped back into the keep. <laughs> the problem is I can't rely on him to stay there. I just needed him to sit his ass in that keep and stay. Let me deal with the rest of it. All right. Uh, oh, only a 66. So we're in summer still. We had plentiful, 72 produced. All right. So not critical that we sell this turn. Not that I mind selling. It's the way we're making most of our money. Um, so rejected, 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 rejected. Wonder why? I mean, we were in good standing and all that. Wonder what causes them to just reject across the board. The fact that nobody's offering me anything anymore leads me to believe there's not much point in me offering anything. And I don't think I can improve my relations any further with them. I'll have to check to see if a gift will uh, bump the number up any further. Or if it's just hit its natural either high point or its um, settling point. Uh, collaboration report. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And lots of trade. All right. So, God. <laughs> what? <laughs> Come on. Oh, man. Okay, <laughs> he left the keep with three fortification to go back and retake Sagewell again. Uh, and I can't rely on my ally to actually stay in the damn keep so I can uh, prevent him from retaking it again. And I can't get my, well, I can get up there, but I won't have any movement points left to actually fight that round. So do I let him have it for now? Hmm. I would love to finish this unit off and take Jiri. I think I'm going to let him have that for now. Let's uh let's keep fighting here. Uh, 
All right, we eliminated a unit, and we're going to step into Jiri. Finally, I feel like our army did something cool and useful and impactful. <laughs> now, if I just get this guy chased down, problem is now I got to leave a unit here, or I have to stick around, and I he's going to move off this keep, and I'm going to get annoyed when the uh, the enemy steps into it. All right, uh, that's all we can do here, though. Not moving my militia again to prevent exactly that problem. Let's uh, let's start the swordsman marching over here, though. Although if I do that, that's a... How big was that force? I think I might have a problem with him coming at me. Let's march into the forest for some defensive bonus. He won't know what that unit is, so... Uh, theoretically, I, I don't know if the AI cheats in regards to uh, peeking <laughs> under the counter. If he gets to flip the counter and know or not, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume he's not gonna peek and he won't know what that unit is. So that's it for our army man movement. We now have a recruit, though. Heck yeah, you're going right there. Unfortunately, I don't get to move him on this turn. Look at that glorious morale. Is that a half star? Is that two and a half? <laughs> the the second one looks like it's cut in half and it's dimmed. Huh. Again, I can't get to the detail screen. Uh, not recruits. Not you. Summary units. Armored knights. I guess there is no detail screen on an army unit. They are what they are. So, nine melee and six armor with uh, hopefully pretty good movement and chase down and all that. We'll look at the details later. But yeah, that sure looks like a half. Oh, that's right. I haven't been looking at specialty points. That's right. I forgot all about the specialty stuff. Uh, I think this is a universal pool that we've accumulated and I can now spend the points to pick an upgrade for somebody. So reduce the chance, uh, reduce surrender chance when defending a location, plus one melee, plus two range, add 10 to the morale, double the chance of an enemy leader being slain, combat mage, extra damage for spells and armor attributes. Uh, I'm not going to take any of the ones that are currently showing, so we'll let the points continue to build up. I forget where those points are coming from. I'll have to go find specialty points to see. Oh, actually, it might show me on that. What's the help screen stay? Nothing about specialty. Nothing about specialty. Hmm. Hoodwink. Steal gold from the kingdom, giving it to the poor in a town, village, or hamlet. A lot of fun stuff in there. Now, I I, I want to say no. I might have dabbled slightly in one of the Gene Forge at some point in the past, but I have no solid memory of it. I remember, I know of the series, and it's possible I played a tiny bit of it sometime in the past, but not enough to provide lasting memories if I did. All right, so we got those two units. I'll get them hooked up, and we'll bring them over, and then I might consider splitting my main army a little further. Try to get at least a second decent sized group that'll help me cover Aminon's activity in this eternal war. Okay, so we're still inching our way through here. I had you going north. I wanted to put you up. I guess we'll start here. No results. Hmm. Um, I think that's it for the moment, other than doing the dungeon. Hmm. 
So we're not going to sell food this round. Probably need to wait for quite a bit. We've, uh, the stockpiles are getting a little low. I can't afford more iron uh, without selling. Our cash is about the minimum I want to go to. So we're not going to do any building right now. Oof, men at arms need 60 iron. A little easier to go with archers. Iron, wood, and recruits. That's not too bad. So far, I haven't had the resources to really build up troops at a rate where our recruits aren't staying near maximum. So I probably need to look into getting some cheaper units to use as defenders other than militia uh, over here. Maybe the key is to spam out a militia and an archer to act as a defensive oh, location holder while the, uh, the armored knights and the swordsmen and so on move forward for the main fights. I'll have to think about that for the future. I think that would probably be the wiser thing. And we're producing so much food. I'm not worried about upkeep or food side. Um, yeah, I might queue up some uh, militia or something. We're still going to be short on iron, so I'm just going to wait. But I should have gotten the upgrade on our mine done earlier. That should have been a priority. That's our only mining location in this whole place. All right. Um. So let's do uh, let's do the adventure real quick. Um. Enter. Forty three spawns remaining, and we're getting what like eight per. So five more fights, <laughs> or so. Go south. Oh, hey, they aren't all eight at a time. <laughs> Good to know. Let's see. You go ahead and continue doing your draw the attack. Everybody else just fight. All right, two heals. Keep moving. Two champions. Uh, same plan, but we'll try the bash with you. Let everybody else fight. Whoa! Whoa! Ouch! Ouch! You can stop doing that. You're on block duty. You go to evade. And you go to heal. And let's kick in a stun. All right, other champions out. Damn it. I am not getting many bashes done. Go back to melee. This will be the last fight for this run. Yeesh, these guys are way harder to hit than I thought. Melee 11. Hmm, just realized there's no I button on this screen <laughs> for, for like an information pop out like the other screens have. Guess it doesn't prevent you from uh, hitting. Nope, can't go there either while you're in here. Oh yeah, that, that also weirded me out where once you're in the dungeon, I remember I was in the dungeon in the last stream and I was trying to, I was trying to get info and I can't, I couldn't, I was prevented from doing things because we're in the combat screen or was it in my test game? I can't remember. 
but I can't can't even get to the help file to give me some some info on the combat stuff and what all these are because I don't have all the things memorized yet. And we have them for our characters too, but uh, I don't know the symbol versus the value, so I assume that's resistance. Uh, so yeah, just be nice to be able to get to some kind of an info screen, whether it's the I key or even the help tile or something. Um, all right. Uh, so don't need to heal. Kill something. All right. So we are out of here. We're down to one heal. But we got another couple of groups, so we're still at 37. That's still going to be five so turns. Ouch. Nothing to find. Oh, we got somebody to four. Orion made four. Hey, buddy. Magic power 15. Yuri uh, hit three, so yay. Long way to go to four there. Tamina is uh, probably a couple big fights away. Closing in on it. Definitely get at the four on that next one. Maybe him. And Davin's a long way to go to four as well. All right. They're getting there. Uh, so we've got, uh, guys running north. I'm running these two guys and him north. I'm going to try checking for adventures in other areas. Uh, I may even go up into uh, his territory. So I definitely don't want to go over here, but, uh, we can, we can send some guys up into, uh, Tarawin with no problem. Uh, you are also useless down here. We'll get you moving too. Can't do any of this stuff for now. Uh, she's out of movement points though. All right, that is everybody, right? So that was good, that was bad. And our fight here, we actually eliminated a unit, which is great. We're gonna be trying to bring over my armored knights and uh, the swordsman and see if we can split the forces up enough to get him to move and retake that, and then finally, finally, maybe, establish a wall to prevent uh, Ammonon here from continuing this fight. Uh, wait. Um, recruits, heroes, nothing in the vault. Not selling, not building, research didn't change. Yeah, we're all set. Oh, I, I, I saw something happen there. <laughs> Did he retreat that guy out of that northern position? Okay, 89 food, so we didn't hit the max. Nothing got wasted, but it'll be time to sell again. We're hitting the end of summer, but um, we'll be fine. Nothing, nothing. Warwick has faded a bit. They're a powerful one. I probably should do, do some diplomacy to continue to increase our Warwick status. Uh, not col Oh, yeah, that's right. I need to do collaboration. I forgot. All right, so Warwick and try to get collaboration agreements with some of the folks we're, we're happy with. Nothing else here. Uh, diplomacy. So let's see. Um, how do I pick? Huh. I mean, stance helps sort it to the good guys on top, but I guess I'll look here. Aqueous is the uh, nation to the south across the water from us. RDR is getting hammered. Let's go back to the summary screen. Uh, equal and equal. All right, so let's try this. So uh, we're allied, we're trading, we're at peace. I want a collaboration up. 
So we've got four diplomatic actions. Oh yeah, I gotta get my emissaries out too. So we're gonna try that. And I'm gonna do the same with Terrawin, weaker and equal. Uh, who else have I got agreements with? Those are the only alliances. Got peace and trade with Morator, who's my neighbor. Um, hmm. Uh, I'm gonna wait on that. Uh, let's let's give him a gift. Twenty-five gold, bump us up a little. Offer peace, and then let's uh, let's just do Tarawin. Let's see if we can get a collaboration with them. I'll send the emissaries out next turn when I see if we get any of these. This gives us a research bonus, just like the trade thing gives us a trading cash bonus. T totally forgot about this. I don't think I've seen any of the computer players offer a collaboration to me. Trade agreements, yes. Peace agreements, yes. Never, I've never seen a collaboration. So I don't know if that's an issue or if that comes later or if there's some reason for that. But not once have I ever had a collaboration offer. So I'm curious what's going to happen there. Uh, so what did happen over here? He did move out of that northern position all the way back down here. That's quite the movement rate you've got there. One, two, three, four, five, uh, I guess six on flat ground. That's not too outlandish. Can I get in? Oh, I can get in. All right. Uh, he moved out of there again. No, you gimpy. <laughs> Stop doing that. Uh, let's see. Holy crap. Look at the movement on these guys. These guys are beasts. <laughs> oh man, look at that. I like it. I want more. Hmm. I think what we'll do, we got our main army here. He brought that back. I would love to smash it. It'd be nice to keep a hold of Jerry. And I can actually get that unit in. So I could bring him forward just to hold this. Bring this forward as a token defensive Jiri. Bring my main group up to try to smash that. Get this guy here. I can't get that unit in there, but I can get... Hmm, how to do this. I think what I want is I want you to go there. You to go there. Oh, crap. I should have moved one of those onto the Baron Keep. Can't make it with either of you, which means I'd have to do it with one of my guys in my army. I desperately want to get somebody on that. I definitely should have moved one of those guys there instead. Um... <clears throat> I think I'll just stack these two for now. He can't make it much further and be really effective. That gets them in range of doing something useful next round. So, this is the stack I'm actually worried about. And in the clear weather and the flat ground, he can move this guy quite a ways. So I'm worried about uh, lightening my, my stack here. I think he might be able to easily get up to the bearing keep on this flat road area. There. If I go, eh, crap, maybe I'll just leave him alone. Let him take Jerry back. Jerry's not really all that important at the moment. Mostly it's important. I just hold the rest of this until I get everything organized. My only question is, do I take a combat here first? I could step out and get a full strength combat, but then I don't think I'd have enough points to get units covering that again. Hmm. I think the priority is go here. Let's let's get the important stuff covered. Force him to either attack into us and or uh, give me a turn to reorganize my, my defenses here. Yeah, all right. Do whatever with what he's going to do. Swordsman, archers, swordsman, and militia. I mean, it's a decent stack. I just wish he didn't move it around so much. 
Moving it up here is accomplishing not much. Uh, although retaking Sagewell would have been probably his priority. That's probably what he was doing. He was trying to retake Sagewell. Uh, X control. So yeah. All right, I'm satisfied with uh, what we accomplished there. Things are starting to get organized. If I can get the Armored Knights in particular into that group, that'll be a strong group. Three Swordsmen, an Archer, a Light, and a Heavy Cav. Then I would love to go face-to-face -face with his, his group here. So, hopefully... Things stay a little organized, so next round I can, uh, I can do a major assault into some unit of his and still maintain control of poor Cardiar's stuff, who he only owns this now. <laughs> it's the only part of his kingdom remaining. So. And I don't have a border with my own kingdom here because he controls the one tiny little connection in between the two of us. That's fine. He better appreciate all this effort I'm putting in on his behalf. All right, that's all the army man movements I'm going to do for now. Moving on. Let's get you further north. Let's go head up into that territory. Bump, bump, bump. More rumors. So that's four out of five, but some of those are going to be false, so those won't count. Then uh, you... Uh, nah, keep running. All right, those three will be focused on investigating new rumors. And you as well. Not moving any of the armies. Roll through this stuff. Got to sell food again. Uh, sell wood again. Five eighty-eight. Buy another ten. Of that ten of that, and uh, let's see. Do we do this? The iron is going to slow me down the most. I'm going to wait another turn or so until I see just how this sorts out with the forces we have in play. All right, so Army Man's done. Uh, are we doing more districts? We're still waiting on that to finish. Two more turns for the excavator. No other slots. That location, we've got a barracks here, so I don't need another barracks. Uh, they're not, eh, they're actually producing a fair amount of stuff. They got a mix of a bunch of things. Huh. They don't need granaries. Maybe a market with three, but I only get one choice. Hmm. Let's, let's go with a guild. Oh. Town, cities, or the crown. So not big enough, huh? Doesn't qualify. All right. Seems like it would be good if it grayed out things that it doesn't qualify for, but I'm not sure if that would be confused with the building already being there being grayed out thing, like over here. There. Slots are all imp are filled, so it grays it out. And then over here, it grays out things that have been built. But here... It's showing me they're available, but then when I try to build it, then I get the pop-up saying, oh, they're not really available because the thing's not big enough. I'm not sure if there's a different or better way or, or just not even bother showing it. I mean, the pop-up gets the message across, but it just seems like there's a system to show things in places you can't build elsewhere. Not big enough for the guild. Let's try, probably gonna have the, oh yeah, it even says here, only be built in town, city, or crown. This is a village, so. The information's on here, just 
the highlighting doesn't get that across. All right, so that's a four size. So that's why there's a difference in what we can build there. We can uh, do those anywhere. So harvesters and excavators don't have the restriction. Really? Nothing else has the restriction? <laughs> At least it's not saying it in the description here. Even the council hall doesn't say it. Hmm. Not worth putting a council hall here. Well, I guess we could do another library, keep bumping our alchemist list and try to get more alchemists to get the research going. That takes a ton of stone. Thirty shards, extractor. Uh, I'm gonna wait. Let's wait a little bit longer. Let's keep building up resources. Okay, done with army mans, done with that. In we go. Another big fight. Uh-oh, lizard champion and lizard fighters. Three lizard fighters. This one is going to be a little tougher, I think, than the last one. All right, standard formation. Um, I'm starting to lose my love affair with Bash. It just doesn't seem to land often enough. Although, to be fair, I don't know how often he's missing his melee attacks because I'm not really tracking that. It's harder to tell. With the Bash, you get the big message about them being stunned, but with the hits, it's... It goes by so quick, it's hard for me to really tell if he's hitting very often. So to say the bash doesn't land very often is in comparison to me not knowing how often the melee attack is landing. So, let's uh, let's try it again. We'll go with the uh, the double, double stun attempt, let everybody else do some hits, and we'll see how hard he gets hit. Oof, he got hit right at the end there. He got multiple hits on him. The bash landed. That means we have to turn you over to healing now. And uh, I'm going to switch you back to... Let's go with Slay. Try to get this guy gone. That's full. Somebody kill that fighter. Yeah, we're not going to get out of here with any other fight, so it's going to be another one fight turn. Man, we're still at 30 some enemies in here. It's taking forever. Let's go switch you back to combat. Oh, that didn't go well. going to take another fight with only five heals remaining so we got at least eesh, probably another five or six turns to get through this place at this rate unless we get some more level ups uh here in the next fight or two hey we got three gold and a shard out of our searching look at that in a split passage we're we're out of here 
I think that's everybody. So, be interesting to see what the AI does here. He can't get to there anymore, so he'll move somewhere. I'm sitting on all four of the locations. I'm not sure where he'll put that. And I'm curious what he's going to do here and here. So, it'll be interesting to see how they move. I gotta check the bad guy. I still don't think the bad guy's moved out of his little northern mountain area. Okay, 71 produced. We're in fall. We're getting some winter effects. We've got surplus still. No problems. We got a peace offer from Mars House and they rejected our, uh, our research. Hmm. Okay. So, oh, he swapped his units. Or he combined them. Ooh, did he combine them? Because that's even scarier. He brought his cavalry up because I don't see an arrow coming down from where that guy was. And I think that was the position he was in. So I think he brought his cav up to combine with that unit that came south. He didn't move at all? Well, that doesn't seem like a good idea. Hmm. I mean, he had nowhere to go location-wise, but that still seems a little odd. Uh, hex control says what? Why the difference? So once again, the hex control, I mean, it tells me I'm in control in the little pop-up at the bottom here, but it doesn't show the same kind of info it does elsewhere. And we've been in here for a couple of turns now. So, uh, let's see. How about, uh, how about supply? Looking good. Just the area around the unit preventing supply from flowing. That's fine. Okay. That gives us a pretty good opportunity to smash this group, though, because I can bring these guys over. I can bring these guys over, and we've got a flat terrain, no defensive bonuses, melee fest. He's got his cav, but I've got my light cav and my uh, armored knights that are going to be coming into play, so I feel a lot more uh, safe in prosecuting this fight, and we're going to have a significant just overall force advantage for just the power number. I'm looking forward to that. But that uncovers this position. I don't have another unit to stick over here to prevent him from running somebody up and grabbing it, so hopefully, worst case, he comes over and sits on it. All right, then our heroes, of course, and we're still running guys north. Let's uh, make a save. What are we up to? Got to get rid of some of these auto saves. Does it create auto saves forever? Because I'm not a fan of games creating auto saves infinitely. <laughs> I mean, pick six or ten or something, and maybe while it's, I guess, while it's in this this development phase fine but when it goes release please don't have it do an auto save every single turn for infinity that always annoys me when i've got to go back and take a look at the list and it's like 400 entries you can turn the auto so i don't want it to be i don't want it to not auto save necessarily i just don't want infinite auto saves so i mean whichever I can go turn it off and make manual saves, but um, that doesn't protect me from crashing unless I'm manually saving every turn. Oh, I'm sure the saves are tiny. It's just a, you know, how many files do you want and why do we need an auto save every single turn type of thing for forever. All right. Uh, so, uh, on. I guess I'm on V2. I thought I'd already done a V2. V2, save new. Game saved. All right. Um, whichever. I mean, it's just a pet peeve of mine. I just don't generally, in a in a rolled out game, see a need for an auto save for every single turn. But whichever. Um, that one's not a big deal. 
I am out of here. So that's all the time I've got for now for uh, some Kingdom Dungeon Hero. Having a good time, learning a lot, and getting some things fixed, helping out. So we shall return um, possibly tomorrow with a continuation of the run. I'm still a little concerned on the diplomacy stuff in regards to this war with Ammon and how I can actually help my ally if they're never going to go to peace. It doesn't feel like I have any way short of totally conquering Ammonon to ever get these guys to a, a position where they're going to be peaceful. And it doesn't, I mean, the, 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 the error we have where I'm controlling his territory doesn't help, but um, yeah, I, I'm not sure how that's going to work. So if I have to just go conquer him completely and then it won't be a problem anymore, but uh, we'll see. I have This is the farthest I've played, so I don't know how it's uh, how it's going to progress beyond that. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, quit out to the main menu, and we shall return tomorrow. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. Greatly appreciate you hanging out for some uh, Kingdom Dungeon Hero. Um, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow. We'll we'll probably continue it tomorrow in the afternoon again. So hope to see you then. Have a great day, evening, night, whatever, and uh, stay safe out there. <laughs>